Alright, looks like we're live. I need to just wait for a confirmation of that fact that we're live in the proper form. And uh, looks that's, that's proper enough. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so, um, yes, the room sort of devoted to a subject, uh, at least the beginning of the room, first bits. Um, just because I'd like to be able to create some sort of reference to uh, things relevant to the idea of particle gravity, um, particle force, uh, and, um, mm, you know, and Lesage gravity is the generic term for that. Uh, the real guy is the French guy before him, um, and uh, Nicholas whatever, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> anyway, um, Something has a Nicholas in there somewhere, right? No, my bad. Uh, let's see. Yes, Nicholas Fatio. Um, the Deler, Deleri, the whatever. Anyway, um, okay, get to the point. So there really should be simulations somewhere of this basic principle. It's so it's kind of simple that if you take a bunch of little bits of stuff. And um, that, like BBs, stuff that moves in straight lines, that doesn't have much friction, and you excite that. So you have a box that has that in it, and it's excited, moving. If you throw two big objects into that box, they will be drawn towards each other. And um, there should be a simulation of that somewhere. It's a physical thing that does happen. And uh, there should be something that... Uh, shows it there should be a video of it or there's some sort of you know animation i can't find anything um but i'm not a very good researcher so if somebody can find that i'll pay ten dollars if you can find it find a link to a decent simulation of an energetic particle field like could even be gas technically these molecules move pretty straight and the fact that if you put two hunks of dust or something in the gas field, they would end up being drawn towards each other without any charge being involved or anything else, um, just from the impacts. But that's another paper I did find from like 1980, a paper regarding the fact that uh, as an explanation for the condensation of galaxies, uh, basically it's using mock gravity or, or the idea of a particle field um actually causing uh condensation of bigger pieces of matter so it's like the little dust particles end up hitting predominantly from the outside in and this that subtle difference more hit you from the outside than hit you from the inside would over time create um you know a gravity effect even in a gravity field you know an extra gravity effect Anyway, there really should be a simulation of that easy, that simple, because that's the real, um, you know, people just don't understand how, how, you know, how basic mechanically this external pressure thing can be to creating something that looks exactly like gravity, um, duplicates it very well, um, except when it comes to doing very fast orbits and other things that would probably fail um, because of the drag issue. So it's an issue that has to be explained. But as I've explained before, the drag issue gets kind of complicated because even conventional physics really won't tell you if I move a, an object, like even the space shuttle, like shooting, and it's moving through the atmosphere. They won't be able to tell you what's physically different between the space shuttle that's moving and the space shuttle that's sitting on the ground. They won't be able to explain the physical difference between those two. And there has to be a physical difference between them. But they have no clue what it is. Uh, and yet they know that this drag problem is a real problem, as if there's not a mechanism to inertia or velocity that actually is a mechanism inside the matter itself that makes the matter keep moving. And that's all you need is a mechanism that keeps the matter keep moving. Uh, a little motor of sorts. Um, so anyway... Um, so the whole Lesage thing and the Fadio thing, so we're talking about something that started 300 years ago, Lesage 
reinvigorated it um, after Newton's death. And um, so that's why he's, it's called his, even though it isn't his idea. And it's not a difficult idea anyway. It's a pretty simple idea. I mean, I came to the same conclusion without ever, ever even hearing of Lesage or Fadio. And I came to the same conclusion. So it's not a, not a profoundly difficult thing to imagine. Uh, once you start thinking about such things, um, you realize that that's what pressure would do, you know, straight line pressure. Um, so anyway, so yes, yeah, so ten dollars for somebody who can find a link on the web that's decent to a good simulation. And I'll pay a minimum of thirty for somebody who wants to actually do a simulation. So I'll explain more about the basic principles for that. Um, and I'll do a one of these live rooms. And if you have a PayPal account, which sort of is necessary, um, I'll solicit donations to your PayPal uh, for your contribution to science. So at minimum, you get 30 bucks. You might get a lot more, uh, depending on if any of my viewers have any value science, value people trying to um, educate the mind of man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, better check the chat just in case there's something egregiously wrong here. It's always safe thing to do. No, so no egregious problems, I guess. All right. Um, so yeah, so the simulation would be the rules are kind of simple. The the bits, there's two kinds, right? So you have just one kind of bit just moves. And let's say, just for simplicity, the whole thing is inside of a circle. So the whole simulation is in a closed system. So that means whenever a bit hits the wall, it just bounces back, just reflects. Now the the pro the thing that the thing that so so it's just pure reflections, and you don't let the little bits hit each other. Just it's just a waste of time. So the little bits can only hit something that's in field, something different that you put in the field of bits. So the bits basically just bounce back and forth hitting the circle if nothing else changes. So you have them come in initially from the entire circumference evenly and from all directions. And the idea is they just bounce back and forth unless they hit something. And then they reflect when well, they don't reflect. So that's the key word here. Um, and the basic, so the basic idea is when you put something else in there, a piece of matter, what happens is, is there's a percentage of the little bits that will cause the whatever matter you put in there to move so they'll be absorbed so you could say that the rule would be they go straight through 95 percent of the time and five percent of the time the thing absorbs their momentum and moves um so that would be the rule uh, and moves at a proportionally slow rate that is one thousandth or one ten thousandth or one millionth the speed of the bits. So the bits are going at a speed, and when a little bit is absorbed by the checker, let's call it, and when the BBs, um, it's no longer in the game, and the checker will move one ten thousandth as fast, but it will take that velocity and just keep moving in the direction it was it was it absorbed the bit in. And so the rest of it just goes straight through. So 5% cause an absorption, which causes momentum in the direction of the absorption. That sort of takes care of the whole Browning emotion. So the trick is, is when you put one checker in the field, it should just sit in one place and wobble. Because there should be proportional energy from all directions hitting it. It's absorbing the same percentage from each direction. So it should just do this kind of thing. Blah, 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 blah. And when you put two in, they should do this kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and that's gravity. So in the simplest form, that is gravity, in my opinion. Um, gravity is just an absorption of a certain percentage of this cosmic background uh, energy. And it includes the cosmic background radiation, but the cosmic background energy is includes also gravity that's where gravity comes from 
its cosmic background energy that is pushing things together, including the atoms themselves are being pushed together by the same force. And um, in, in uh, atoms, they're being pushed together by the same force, but after it's been magnetically filtered, which means the force is now even stronger because it has been se separated. Uh, the force has a, a two forms, you know, electron force, proton force, and it interacts with electrons and protons inversely, which causes magnetism, which I've explained in other videos, so I really don't want to do that here. But that would be the advancement to the theory from uh, Lesage and Fadio is adding nuclear physics that they didn't know, that we now do know, um, and enhance the idea of the ultra mundane, right there in the Wikipedia article, <laughs> ultra mundane corpuscles. Um, you know, a very good phrase. So ultra mundane sort of indicates the fi only 5% absorption. Uh, it could be 2%, could be 1.5%. doesn't really matter what percentage you use because it'll all work out in, in the same in the end. Um, and uh, as you change the weight or density of the objects you put in, the, you could change those numbers. Um, and the amount of gravity created would be commensurate to the change in those numbers. So you create more gravity by creating more density. Uh, you create more absorption, essentially. Uh, you make it move. <laughs> and by moving, the force that would have hit it doesn't hit it. And that's the key to the whole thing. So anyway, so, yeah, so I really... This should, really should be easily simulated by people who know how to do this simulating crap. If somebody even knows of a decent program where I can do it myself, um, you know, like you, they give you some tools and all that kind of crap. And, you know, the I've looked at some stuff, like even in Firefox, you can do some of this stuff, but it doesn't seem really suited to my purpose, which is to have different kinds of things interact. And... Uh, it's a little complicated to try to make two different kinds of thing in the functions that Firefox makes available. But anyway, um, I just don't want, you know, big learning curves. I don't really want to spend too much time learning how to simulate stuff. So if somebody already knows how to do that stuff, it really would save a lot of time. But I do want to make this video relevant to the title, just in case somebody gets here in the future based on Lesage's name. Um, there should be links in the description if I found something better than the Wikipedia page. Um, so if you know of any um, resources that are uh, that have more data or more information than the Wikipedia page, I don't mean historical information. I you know I don't even mean like a the actual documents written by Fadio. I mean, information in the form of experiments or simulations or images or something else that gives more description to the theory itself. Yeah. So, because um, I think if people did see it, I mean, I've sort of realized that in the last video when somebody was commenting about it, like it was a hard thing to see. I see it's really easy for me to visualize it. So I really don't need to see it because it's like, oh, yeah, I totally get it. You know, I totally get how, you know, the shadow thing. You know, if I have lights all around me and I'm sitting somewhere in the middle of that or anywhere in there, I would feel the light from all the directions. You know, it's, it would be light everywhere. And it would all look like it's coming right towards me. Even though it was pointed in all kinds of directions, the light that hit me seems very personal. And as soon as you put something else in the field, you know, automatically... Oh, yeah, that's going to shadow me. Whatever I put in that field is going to shadow, going to create a, a an eclipse <laughs> in certain locations. And it's just a fact that I'm going to get less energy from that direction that it's at than I'm going to get from all the other directions. And if the energy can push me, which is perfectly logical, then, yeah, I'm going to move. So you can even do it with, like, laser guns. And as long as you can understand that if you have an intense enough laser, it will push an object, 
then you can kind of understand that, yeah, if I have two laser beams pointed and I put two objects in there, kind of obviously the two objects are going to move together because there's going to be more pressure on the outside and there's not going to be anything on the inside because the laser can't get there. Kind of obvious. Yeah. So, um, let's see, is there any other purpose here than to point out that uh, solicit from anybody interested in this subject, any knowledge you might have. Like I said, if you got here, just based on the title, um, if you can post a comment or a link to anything you know on the subject that you found interesting. And again, just, you know, the historical stuff really isn't that interesting. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it'd be beyond the fact that you could write, you could write whole editorials about the unfairness of the world in the sense that the Nicholas Fadio guy is the guy who really lived and died for this theory. And, um, you know, nobody knows his name. But the Lesage guy is the guy who just picked up the dead Fadio's papers, you know, um, bought himself permission to buy his resources, his life's history, and, um, you know, just repackaged uh, Fadio's theory. And so it's kind of an unfairness that uh, the original guy kind of got dissed. And Fadio had actually communicated with Newton. And a lot of, you know, rather Huygens, all those people knew who Fadio was. So it wasn't like this was a nothing theory. It was a real computer as a theory. And it was, in some sense, dissed for a lot of stupid reasons. And the history gets a little funny in that sense because a lot of this becomes political because Fadio became some kind of religious nut, you know, some, some cult of some kind. And um, so, yeah, religious campaigner. <laughs> you know, it's, it's sort of a vague notion of what religion this was. But anyway, and apparently it was a very uh, cult kind of thing or something, and everybody thought that was disreputable. And so it's almost like some of that dirty politics had something to do with this we must destroy Fadio's theory. Um, and... Uh, you know, it smells a little bit when, you know, so, so this is, these are the poor, these are very poor illustrations of the concept of an external pressure, but you can at least see the radial nature that it has to be straight line force um, and that there's net, no net directional force. And if you put two objects in there, you could realize that there is a net directional force because the two objects will shield each other from a exactly opposite force and uh, you know this is supposed to be two bodies attract each other it's not a very good you know it's a pretty crappy graphic I mean it really doesn't say it very loudly <laughs> you know so um, you know I mean I guess it's not terrible I mean you get the idea there's three lines coming from L sides and then there's not three lines here and you know that's a big difference Guess we could just cycle through. These are arrows in that other picture. You don't even see the arrows. But obviously, it's, as I pointed out, it, it tends to create a force that goes directly to the center of every object. So it creates a center of gravity. It does, you know, it does everything gravity does. It does it very well. Um, and it's um, almost a criminal that it is dist as if it's all rubbish when it does so many things so well that it's the kind of rubbish you really have to take a second look at and third look at because they have every appearance of being really a good theory and uh hmm. sort of looks like me a little bit mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah reincarnation of fadio so I'm still fighting the fight. Now, this drawing doesn't tell you much, but that's a Fadio drawing. Um, and uh, using triangles to try to illustrate the uh, symmetry of the force. But it's a little confusing. And this is what he thought things were shaped like. See, he's trying to make a mechanical force. He doesn't know what atoms are or any of that stuff. So he's trying to come up with a reason for 
the idea of percentages of the force hitting things. But, you know, we had, they didn't know anything about atoms. They didn't know there was more empty space inside of material things than there is actual bits to hit. They didn't know any of that. So we had to come up with some kind of mechanism that allows for a partial um, impact with objects. This was uh, <coughs> on um, Fadio's paper where Newton had signed it. Um, kind of um, a letter sort of confirming that uh, he liked the idea. And Fadio was proud of that. And that's Lesage. And this is Lesage's redrawing of Fadio's description. And it's not, again, not a great illustration um, beyond the fact that well, it's not a great illustration in any way whatsoever, but the way these objects are shaded is kind of deceptive. Um, that only intended to make them look like spheres. This black doesn't have anything to do with except for the idea that these are two spheres. And you're supposed to get the idea that there's less particles in between them than there is on the outside, but you really don't get that too. It doesn't, doesn't leap out at you that that's what's going on, so it's not a great illustration. I think that's Kelvin or somebody. And it's like, that might be... Uh, the other guy might have been Maxwell. And I don't know, one of them is Darwin's in there too. The son of Darwin or something like that. So again, not perfect illustrations. You get some idea, but it, it's not enough of an idea. And that's it. That's all we got. And there really should be a simulation demonstrating how the, all you need is the uh, kinetic energy in a field and that kinetic energy will automatically, if it's smaller, you put something bigger in it, it'll automatically force those bigger things uh, to move into each other, which is a huge um, similarity to gravity. Huge. Mechanic and such. All right. Oh, I have to go all the way back through all the images? No, oh, no, I think I can just X this out. Yes, I can. All right, let's see if there's any interesting. So it does the inverse square law. It does the mass proportionality thing. And then they get into what it doesn't do. And all of the what it doesn't do things are not that complicated. So, um, I mean, they're easily explained with modern physics. So once you understand that there's atoms and not, you know, planets inside of us <laughs> or some, some sort of, once you understand that there's a lot of empty space inside of us and that there's no friction, um, it gets a lot easier to uh, explain uh, how this would work. But there's uh, very easily defended as a viable theory. Oh, this Illuminati nutter. Really not interested in wacky bullshit, thank you. If you want someone to do a sandbox model of your theory, whatever, um, try contacting Anton Pavlov YouTube channel. Why would I do that? He has a universe sandbox model that he is able to do custom modifications to. Whatever, but okay. We'll see what that is. <laughs> you know, I just, you know, I'm afraid to even look based on your recommendation. His Twitter, I don't do Twitter. I'm suspended, so you'll have to contact him. Uh, yeah, you're suspended for good reasons, no doubt, right? <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not a very good um, uh, recommendation thing or whatever you want to call it to say you're suspended from something. I guess we don't need the YouTube part on there. Ouch. Ouch. What the hell was that? Scissors fell on me and the camera crashed. Oh, <laughs> cool. Where did the camera go? That's a really big catastrophe. This must be it. I feel its heaviness. It's tangled in a bunch of wires. What is this shit? It's good to wonder that. Yeah, I'm gonna go over that. Oh, I guess it was my foot that did it. Hmm, it was my fault, I guess. My foot caught the wire. 
Everything's a delicate balance in life, unfortunately. And, uh, I'm not very well balanced. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's the way it is. All right, sorry, a bit of a distraction. Unnecessary and such, but shit happens. Anton Pavlov. Looks kind of creepy. All right, I explain math, science, space concepts using video games. I am highly school science. I am a high school science math computer. I guess he's a teacher or something. Uh, doesn't look too good, though. Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and today we're going to imagine what the universe, or at least our own galaxy, is going to look like in about one... Oh, yeah, I'm sure you know that. Sure you do. All right, black holes, eyeball planets, SpaceX launching, who cares? New type of planet discovered, and eh, whatever, sure. Uh, Big Bang and cosmic radiation. I don't see any simulations here, to the truth. There are three reasons we think and could, whatever, whatever, might have life. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know how life was created on Earth. You know how that happened. I'm sure you do. All right. Uh, what happened if a football travels at the speed of, yeah, it's a football. It's not a football. It's a soccer ball. <laughs> but whatever, you fucking foreigners. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, whatever. I don't see any simulations here demonstrating that he's a great simulator. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'll keep it for reference. Maybe I just subscribe, and then I won't have to look it up later. But I don't think I'll subscribe because it's not my kind of crap. No, it really isn't. All right, I'll just save it for later. Well, I can't PM him, so yeah, I'll have to look for his email. All right, sure is fucking doing Twitter. All right, so enough of that. Now I can close this probably. Don't need to go back to what's his face. Uh, that's the wrong page. The sage is what I want. Okay, so we'll move it down a little bit to the funny looking picture. Uh, all right, back to the comments. If there's anything of interest. Mm, no. Also, you may want to investigate David Yerishis. Scalar model of physics involving fractals. Well, fractals don't interest me at all. So I don't think that has anything to do with anything at all, frankly. Yep, don't think so. Yeah, he left some kind of wacky comments. I remember the David D. Hilster thing or something. That Illuminati guy showed up there talking all kinds of wacky, you know, Fourth dimension bullshit or something, <laughs> some kind of bullshit. And I don't trust him much. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we have just replace this video with this code, and it should work. All right, we're going to talk a little about a new scalar model of physics. And oh, is this like scalar waves or something? I mean, isn't that all horse shit? Or a little head. That, you know, over a period of microseconds, everything in the universe that was going to be created was instantly created. Who cares? And since then, there's nothing new in the universe. Just exchanges of things from one form to the next. Oh, yes. That's it. But there are Everybody agrees on that, I think. I think there's no evidence that the universe is creating anything anywhere. No, nothing has been cited as a true engine of creation. Are some things about the Big Bang model that are fundamentally indefensible. Okay. Hadronic particles. He wrote a brand new model for that. And we use it. It works. It's wonderful. Uh, this guy looks like a loop de doer. I mean, look at this staircase. What the fuck? <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, I just, you know, I, I hate things that are not symmetrical. You know what I mean? You have nice square stairs and then you have this loop de dewey whatever that is, sticky crap. 
as a guardrail. I mean, that's just, uh, and then this doesn't have anything. This drapery looking stuff over here. And I don't know, it's like a car seat over here. It's just, uh, I hate, hate uh, things that just don't really match. A guy named Mahmoud Malehi reformulated the laws of thermodynamics. And his reformulation of the laws of thermodynamics fundamentally alters how you talk. I mean, just you can't reformulate the laws of thermodynamics. I mean, it's <laughs> just silly. So just a minute ago, he said, it's pretty clear the universe is just an exchange. Things are just being converted from one form of battery into another form of battery. I mean, it's, that's all there is, really. There's energy loose. That's obvious. Little bits flying around. Radiation hits you. That's free energy, right? You go to the nuclear power plant and it's glowing green. Oh, there's some free energy flying off of there. And the rest of the energy is just being exchanged from being in a, the pressure of an oxygen molecule to being in the pressure of some other molecule. It's just an exchange of a pressure. So it's just batteries. So something is either a battery, matter, you know, compressed atoms are its free energy. But that's it. The universe is made of that. So thermodynamics is just arguing that if all your little bits shoot off and go out into space and fly out of your universe, right? A bunch of photons, theoretically, right now, are shooting through space and they don't hit anything. Like, say, the photons bouncing off of me now, they shoot into space. Like, say, I didn't have a roof here. They shoot out. And let's just say they don't hit anything. Well, then they leave the universe. So that's a little piece of potential pressure, a little piece of stuff that could be hitting something and causing pressure that isn't going to be causing pressure anymore. So obviously, thermodynamically, your universe would start getting colder and colder because all the matter bits would start to not have anything to push them together anymore. So they'd all kind of fall apart and all the bits would get loose and they'd all fly away. You can't reformulate that. It's just a fundamental fact. Yeah, I'll jump ahead a little. Bunch of Gelman students using the same device that he used nine years later. He's got a fucking telephone pole in the house. I mean, that's sort of cool. You know, I mean, it must be one hell of a house. He's got a fucking telephone pole. I worked in a restaurant once. I had a tree right in the middle. You know, and they cut a hole in the roof. It had like a six foot trunk on it, the tree. Pretty cool. And they split his quarks into subquarks. And that's not in the literature. All right. Okay. So, stupid quarks, which are bullshit anyway, and who the hell cares? And what the hell? They never saw one really. They. It lasts for 0 0.01 zillionth of a second, and it does, well, it doesn't really do something, but it makes that guy over there go wibbly-wobbly. So we know it must be a quark. He must have ate a quark, because only by eating a quark could you go all wibbly-wobbly. I mean, it's bullshit. Who cares? Quarks, morks. Ugh. Putrid physics. Very dedicated, hard-working, disciplined, really focused people with all kinds of tools and training. This house keeps changing. <laughs> I guess they're zooming in and zooming out. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny. Uh, competence and rigor and discipline, and they take a piece of the elephant and they examine it and they examine it and they examine it, and they take what they know and they throw it on the wall. All published literature. <laughs> right? I don't know if that's a great metaphor for it, but I mean, obviously they take these very narrow assumptions and they just will not listen to anything that's outside of those narrow assumptions. And then along comes guys like Brian O'Leary and he sees all this stuff scattered on the wall and he starts trying to figure out how does all this crap fit together? You know, I mean, it's all part of the same science. How do these pieces fit? And he makes them... Well, I'm just saying, we obviously know the pieces don't fit. Fence space doesn't fit with quantized quantum mechanics. It just doesn't fit. The quantum mechanics is basically saying there's little plank corpuscles or clumps of matter. It doesn't have anything to do with clumps of energy. 
It doesn't have anything to do with this stupid bent space model. So you can't, you'll never blend the two because they're based on a fundamentally different premise. One is essentially acknowledging the existence of forces, and one of them doesn't acknowledge the existence of force. You know, beyond the fact that it's saying somehow every single atom has a vacuum cleaner in it that's sucking space. Horrifying discoveries. One of them is that few branches of science use the same language, so they don't communicate with each other. Much of the information they produce is, is contradictory because they're asking different questions. Uh, yeah, well, they're looking with different tools at different levels. So, yeah. I, I mean, the only ones that really matter would be people like uh, people looking at the big space, the big universe, and people looking at the little universe should have consistent views, okay, on uh, assumptions about function. But the biologists don't really need to do any of that because they can just generalize the physics. They don't have to know the specifics of exactly how chemical bonds are bonded to know their bond. And they all, all they really need are the bigger blocks. They don't need to know what the bigger blocks are made out of. They can build their building out of cement blocks and they don't have to know how cement blocks are made at all. It's hard to sort out who's asking the right question or whether the questions are asking this kind of crazy attempt to reconcile those four known and presumed to be only forces of nature. That is exactly right. In 1903, a guy named E.T. Whitaker published a suitable paper. Yeah, whatever. Always going back in history to dig up some whatever crap. <laughs> it's just unnecessary. Just make arguments about what the evidence points to. We have a whole bunch of evidence. Let's just say, what does the evidence point to? What, are, what, what theory fits the evidence well? That's what people should be doing. Uh, without creating paradoxes and without creating uh, fundamental problems in terms of making the big universe consistent with the small universe. Because frankly, there's only one universe. I mean, I should be able to get that everybody to agree with that. If I say there's only one universe and it's the small universe, everybody should be able to agree with that that the empty space the atoms are in is the, exactly the same empty space that the planets and galaxies and solar systems are flying around in. It's the small universe is the only universe. Whatever happens in the big universe, it had to happen in the small universe first, so to speak. The small universe done it, not the big universe. Everything happens on the electron photon level Nothing happens, technically, on the asteroid planet level. We still have copies of it, even though it's been erased from the Internet. Uh, so another conspiracy theory. You still have copies. It's been erased from the Internet. Why don't you just put it on the Internet? I'm sure some guy who died in whatever, 1905 or whatever, I'm sure he's not going to mind. So why don't you just publish it, and then it's on the Internet. Is that complicated? I'll publish it. Send it to me, and I'll make a website with all of the documentation you say have been censored from the Internet. So anybody who says there's something censored from the Internet, send it to me, and I'll put it on the Internet. How's that? So whatever you got, secret government thing, I don't care. I'm not worried, okay? If the CIA comes and kills me, well, at least that'll be an interesting event, won't it? But I'm just saying I'll publish anything. I don't give a shit. I'm not afraid to publish. So send it to me and I'll publish it. I mean, it's just such a, just such a lame cop out. Oh, they're censoring our secret knowledge. No, they're not. That's horseshit. You can't get it online anymore. Silly story. Just a preposterously silly story. Pretty interesting. E.T. Whitaker was a Scottish mathematician who figured out using partial differential equations what the waveform structure, functions, and dynamics of gravitational field effects are. Yes, there's no waves in gravity. It's this dead simple force. <laughs> dead simple. 
I mean, there's no waves in it. Suskind in California, who I completely disagree with when he teaches Einstein's gravity, draws it pretty simple. It's pretty much just fluid dynamics. You know, whether you pull it out of the drain, whether you whether you open a drain and let the fluid pour out, or whether you push into the drain, it doesn't matter, but I mean, it's the same thing. I was thinking about that, actually. I was thinking of um, just a question I had. So we know, you know, the, the water spirals in a certain direction going down the drain, but what if you pressurize the closed bottle or something, and you turn the drain upside down, so it shoots up, and you pressurize it, you pump fluid in, you're still going to create a, a whirlpool of sorts, right? Even though you're pumping it up. And I just wondered which way it would spin. <laughs> is that sort of would indicate whether the spin is a function of the molecules of the drain or whether it's a function of the fluid? It would be interesting whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. And he demonstrated in his papers that gravitational field effect is a product of finer scale interactions fire scale interactions so whatever whatever that is all right see if there's any comments uh, let's see um, time independent physics below plank level whatever there's no time independent. Just this, this fucking silly words. Oh, God, I hate you truth or nutters. Time independent physics. It's just such a silly concept. The physical things that, you know, that, what, happen instantaneously. <laughs> and they all happened at once. So a zillion years of stuff happened, but it all happened instantaneously. So it all happened so fast we never saw it. Whatever. I like to see this infighting among the self-declared geniuses. All right. So um, every great scientist of history, everyone who got the right answers was in a community of people who got the wrong answers. Just a fact. Newton was right, and like everybody around him was wrong. It's just sort of a fact. So is your argument that no one's ever right? No one ever gets the right answer? No. No, obviously that's not the truth. So this is just a, just a silly malign for, that serves no purpose. Because the fact is, of this group of losers, the gold medal winner will come out of that group just a fact shithead all right who think they're discovered that all physics is wrong means they'll have real scientists alone let's see what this is who think they've discovered that all physics is wrong so who's arguing that all physics is wrong <laughs> nobody means they'll leave real scientists alone for a little while what does that mean They'll leave real scientists alone for a little while. Keep it up. This doesn't even make any sense. Oh, fuck. Amazing. All right. Uh, Non-standard thermodynamics from Negatropy. Wiki. Who cares? I, I mean, I, I, totally uninterested bullshit. You know, show me an experiment that demonstrates your wacky world, okay? Like the two-slit experiment. See, all of quantum mechanics is based on this silly little two-slit experiment. And if somebody rational looks at it, they can come up with a rational explanation. They don't need to do many worlds and photons with radar and the photons are splitting into wave functions and away from... They can do something logical and say matter's complicated and the matter's fucking the light. The matter's fucking it. Shouldn't say fuck. I have to clean my language up, and I just, I don't want to, but I know I have to. For the cause, <clears throat> I have to become polite. Oh, oof, got my stomach in thinking about it. Um, 
Uh, fractal field but decom yeah no chance so just keep talking more of this bullshit and i'll just dispose of you because this is useless tripe as i pointed out before my intention here is to contrast two theories my theory against the silly nonsense of the conventionalists i'm not here to debunk your silly crap and it is tinfoil hat nonsense and as i pointed out by playing some of ken wheeler and playing some of D. Hilster and playing some of uh, uh, Bill Gates. It's all debunkable crap. All right. And I've done my share of debunking. And I'm not obligated to debunk every single one of you lunatics. So you're just wasting my time. My agenda is clear. I'm defending a specific theory against a specific theory. And all this sidetrack bullshit of your Illuminati nuttiness, that's your problem, fuckhead. Take it someplace. Take it to David's channel or to Ken Wheeler's channel. <clears throat> You're not going to convince me of it. I'm not a dupe and a fool. I'm not a sucker or an idiot. <laughs> so it ain't going to work. All right. <clears throat> That's not how you say Max Planck's name. Who cares? Uh, is that really important? Is it? Just wondering. <laughs> is, that, is that really important? And if I show people saying it exactly like that, or even saying things like Max Planck or Max Planck, so I could show two different physicists saying his name different ways. Does that mean I win? By your standards? Because I've proved one of them's doing it wrong? Fuck, could you... Could you like if I paid you five bucks, could you be more of a petty dickless weasel <laughs> just for my entertainment? I mean, I love to watch people with inverted dicks trying to fuck things. I mean, it's funny as hell. And it's clear you have an inverted one. Okay. The A is pronounced as in the word father. I'm very excited. Which A? The one in Plunk or the one in Mox? <laughs> fuck you just till dead oh god these people are so pathetic um the anthropophiles anthro something whatever tales of quantum physics from another world i'm not looking that shit up he's monetized his physics do i care ultimately there's uh only the whole Oh, whatever this mush will be. The entirety of the cosmos. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Little fantasy unicorn fun. There is no scientific word for such a thought. <laughs> Delusion is the scientific word for it. You are a deluded kookamonga. You are, your brain is made of fucking soggy oatmeal with green mold on it. The neurons are not in any kind of coherent, organized arrangement. You are not adding two plus two equals four properly. You are dysfunctional as a thinking device. Re. Tardo. Anyway, because it is a dualistic mindset of science that the world is made of tiny little pieces. Yes, like photons. <laughs> that up to nothing. Well, they obviously add up to complexity when they're smashing each other. They're smashing things into each other. So obviously that ends up making complexity. That's why we have a hundred different kinds of atom. You see, it's because they can be smashed together in a hundred different configurations that are stable. You dumb fuck. I don't know, I should have said flucker. Oh, I probably flucker is cheating too much, so I have to just let it go. Let, let the F bombs go. All right, man, what idiots. No, the gold medal winner will have studied a 
much wider breadth of experiments than you have. Well, that's just crap. So what experiment? Why don't you point to it? Allen aspect experiment only done one time with a special mirror that spins super duper fast that he patent pended and won't allow anybody else to use. <laughs> yeah, what, what experiment have I underappreciated the magnificence of you fucking weasel? Which you demonstrate by thinking all quantum mechanics is based on the double slit experiment. I'm saying the entire creation of the wavicle nature of light is all dependent on their silly look it looks like water waves in the double slit experiment yes it doesn't look anything like water waves in the single opening experiment that is true the single opening does not look anything like that at all this it's a total failure as a similar but the double slit looks just like it so it must be like water and light must be a wave in water that's how fucking retarded your science is, you fucking dumb cunt. All right, maybe at least acknowledge the stern garlic experiment. Where have I not acknowledged the fact that electrons are charged? Oh, so we'll save this for later. <laughs> but yes, I've already done videos on the stern garlic experiment. So where did I not acknowledge it? What I don't acknowledge is their, again, silly interpretation of what the experiment is doing. Have you any idea how stupid it is to have an experiment where you say, all right, the electron is going to do a specific thing. We're going to put it into charge plates and it's going to do a specific thing. When the electron, before it gets into the experiment, already can feel the charges. It's already orienting itself based on the charge. You can't surprise an electron with a charge. You can't just say, surprise, I surprised you. These electrons are very quick. They sense charges really quickly. Okay, so you can't fool them with this bullshit. So you people aren't even smart enough to realize that the electron changes its identity before it even gets to the fucking experiment because you're too stupid to figure out sensible little easy stuff like that because you're such dumb fuckers. All right. I'm not trying to brainwash you. I didn't say you were trying to brainwash me, did I? I said you're wasting my fucking time with fucking religious kookerosity. I'm not going to be converted by your non-existent evidence to believe your phantasmagorical fucking silly I like to fucking lick a unicorn vagina bullshit. I'm not going to be converted into a unicorn vagina licker. <sighs> The way I see it, different models can lead to the same results from our perspective. La 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 la. Especially if everything is based on fractals. La 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 la. <laughs> it's just complete rubbish. There's absolutely no evidence the universe is fractals. There's no evidence the big universe has anything like charge happening. There's no evidence of anything like an electron and like a proton and like a neutron. There's no evidence it's a fractal universe. None. Nothing consistent with any fractal notions. It's just, you're just making shit up because somebody shows you a fractal and there's a tiny similarity in the sense of, well, it has stuff going around circles and that's the same as this going, so this is going around circles. So circle, circle, so that's enough. That's all you need. That's, again, just as retarded as this two-slit experiment crap, just as retarded as I can spin something in water and if I spin the two things this way, they repel each other, and if I spin them this way, they attract each other. When they're not doing any of those things, repulsion or attraction, they're just creating pressure, low pressure, high pressure by spinning. And it's such a weak force. So, but yes, the people see that and they say, that's a magnet. When there's no evidence magnets are spinning, that anything inside of the magnet is spinning. There's absolutely zero evidence of any movement inside of a magnet, but you'll believe in any way. Because you want to believe something stupid and screwy. You don't want a simple, rational answer. You want some kind of answer that there's some hope that, that there's a fucking unicorn you can molest. You're all unicorn molesters just looking for a way to make it legal. Uh, no. That add up to completeness. <laughs> who are who, 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 you even talking to? No. That add up to completeness, to a hole in your fucking head. 
a big black hole of dumb shit. Smelly retard. Oh, man. People are just so fucking stupid. Oh. All right. This is a waste of time, so I will block them soon. All right. <clears throat> That is why all things are coherent to each other, which they aren't in any way whatsoever, which is what gravity and magnetism demonstrate, which is a pile of shit again. It's, it's no evidence of any coherency. They don't both have blonde hair. Oh, the South Pole has blonde hair and the, the North Pole has Oh, the South Pole has blue eyes. and the, There's no coherent, whatever that even means. That's just bullshit rubbish talk. What's, what's, what's a coherent? What, what do you mean by coherent? Everything is coherent to everything. How, how so? In what, in what fucking way? They all have cell phones and they have each other's number? What the fuck are you talking about? They all have red shirts? What What? what coherency is there, you fucking lunatic? <sighs> is that really important? Question mark. Regarding Max Plague's name. Well, uh, you were just saying you need to clean up your language. Well, I, I don't know how you make that relevant. Uh, you little Nazi spelling police have always, since the day I even arrived on the internet, I had no respect for assholes who worry about somebody mispronouncing a word or misspelling a word. Fuck you until dead. I'll say that forever and ever. It's just a waste of people's time for anybody to worry about it. Uh, it, it only becomes relevant when you're going to demonstrate that somebody has no knowledge of a subject, just because somebody's name's been said a whole bunch of times. I mean, you could argue that Mickelson um, versus Michelson when yes 90 percent of the of of the time his name was called michelson you know it was michelson morley not mickelson morley so you could argue that somebody wouldn't be aware of an awful lot of content if they called him mickelson because most of the physicists for the last hundred years have called him michelson mathematical proofs from coldman's observations uh, again so interesting made up math wow i just can't wait that proves something math proves something no experiments prove something math doesn't prove a motherfucking thing experiments do data you have to have some data newton proved the inverse square law and the rules of gravity because he had a ton of data from kepler and the other guys a ton of data not math Math means nothing if you never define the units. Science is literally in the process of determining the units. Well, science is in the process of licking its own anus. Science isn't doing any science. Yet they are uh, ultimately just abstractions, not objective and tangible. That's all just rubbish anyway. Uh, certainly you can formulize effects. It's really easy to do. You see the effect. You say, I roll dice at Las Vegas and I can, I can take a sampling of my rolls and I can come up with a probability theory and a very nice hunk of mathematics that will tell you absolutely nothing about what caused the effect. It'll just tell you, yes, I have a formula for the consequences. I don't have a formula for the causes. And what a real scientist is trying to do, like a real detective, he's trying to figure out what caused the death of somebody. He's not trying to make a statistical analysis of the death. He's not trying to figure out how fast the cells are dying. He's not doing any of that bullshit. He's trying to figure out why is the guy dead? And, and physicists have totally uh, left the building when it comes to that objective. They're not detectives anymore. They're just wandering in their little La La comic strip. Things, that's not a great comment. Um, you can prove that your uh, data sets are fractal by comparing them at different scales and you didn't prove any of that where did you prove anything like that you haven't proven anything like that and as i just argued you can't you won't be able to because there's no there's no you're not going to find the the, the the correlation okay between the function of uh, uh spherical bodies in gravity in space and the little bits inside of uh atoms you're just not going to find any consistent correlation um, because they're functioning differently. They're not the same thing. Light going through a slit is not the same as water going through a slit. They're not the same thing. They're affected by completely different things. The water is a medium. The water has friction. The water isn't moving in absolute speed. I mean, it's just 
it's silly to make these comparisons. It's the first rule of making a big boo 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 <laughs> is to not recognize that your two experiments have nothing in common. All right, what and who determines what what is one of those effects? That is just an arbitrary abstraction, my point. What is? So again, just too ambiguous a statement to be meaningful. What and who determines what is one of those effects? What? What are you talking about? You either make a rational argument with, like you can go into court and you can have no evidence and you can just say the invisible man did it. Or you can go into court and you can explain, look, this is how he had motive. Uh, this We have a videotape. Uh, this is his DNA. Uh, this is, and you can set it up and just point out how in every respect this guy's guilt fits the evidence. Or you can come into court with just silly crap. I have mathematics, uh, you know, and uh, he looks guilty to me, right? Doesn't look guilty to you. He looks like a creepy guy, right? That's that's kind of evidence, right? Looking creepy. And that's all you got, Illuminati. Ah, and that's all you got, Mars guy. Mainstream is wrong about the harmonious universe. I don't homogeneous. Who who the fuck? What mainstream says there's a homogeneous universe? I haven't seen too many physicists say that, so I don't know who you're talking about. Coleman shows this in a video. Shows what? What? <laughs> what? You 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 apparently could link to videos before. Why don't you? <laughs> But why don't you demonstrate something? I'm playing one of your jerky links right now. This guy's a fucking idiot. So you see, so you linked me to an idiot, and now you're going to sit there and tell me, oh, I have another idiot. You said the units are based on effects. No, no, I said formulas are based on effects. See, you, you people, it is true. None of you ever listen to anything anybody says. You just pervert everything stated. So Bill Gates is right about the fact that none of you cunts can pay the least bit of attention to what anybody ever says. Oh, amazing. Uh, who determines what is one of those effects? Again, this is just perverse nonsense. The evidence determines consistency in the evidence. All the evidence indicates that the speed of light is 3 million meters per second, give or take. It doesn't go 2 million, it doesn't go 1 million, it doesn't go 500, it doesn't go 10 miles an hour, it doesn't go zero, it doesn't do a lot of things. It does this pretty consistent. That's what all the evidence indicates, shithead. It's just a pattern of observation. So, well, whatever, let's just get rid of one of these guys. Let's go, we should get rid of Illuminati first, and then we'll get rid of Mars. Yeah, that's the way to go. Fuck off. Time waster. Let's play more of his, his silly person. Fibonacci series is the only series. Oh, so Fibonacci series. So it's just he, conspiracy nutters. Just they're just so full of shit. So out of their fucking minds. Oh, you know, it was, you know, you know, just tell some kind of wacky story. You know, whatever. John the Baptist was really Mary Magdalene, and you know, <laughs> blah blah blah. I mean, just. Just, you know, it's all, life is a movie. Just make up bullshit, write a silly script, and uh, yes, that's the truth. Doesn't have, you don't need a fact of any kind. In all of mathematics, in which the inverse has the same proportions as the, as the direct product, it's, it's really interesting stuff. No, it really isn't. Yes, there's obvious bullshit in math, right? When they do wavelength, is a number that increases right as frequency as a number decreases so they have one word i mean two words wavelength and frequency that are exactly the same thing which is the third word period okay so they have three words for exactly the same thing and they conveniently have two concepts that are inversely related so they can put wavelength and frequency into a formula to essentially do something stupid like you know inverse and multiply so, so you can essentially take what you put into the formula on one side and you can take it out on the other side it's just such a gimmick and 
It is the golden mean. And uh, it is. Oh, the golden mean and the golden ratio. Da, 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 da. Oh, God. These people are so pathetic. Fractal. It is purely fractal at every scale. And when you plot it, look what you get. You get the Nautilus. Ah, so it's another one of these people who look at seashells, you know, and yes, there's geometry in plants, you know, seeds, really interesting. You know, so I remember seeing somebody who did a whole survey on seeds and why the seeds are in these certain geometric arrangements and how it's the perfect arrangement, really, because you can maximize the number of seeds perfectly, you know, to get the most seeds in the least amount of space, you use this... Um, not even a fractal it's sort of a fractal except it has chaos introduced and since there's a little bit of chaos to um, nudge the things into each other you know to, to create enough noise where they fit but it is interesting but I'm just saying of course nature takes advantage of economy so it can figure out what's more efficient over time over time nature does that we, you know, it's, it's like we don't have fingers that are longer and then a short finger and a long finger. Our fingers don't come out like variable length because over time it was figured out that, no, this is much more efficient to have them all kind of symmetrical so you don't end up lopping one off. You get that favorite curvature. Now, if you take that curvature and you plot it this way, you're looking down either into the middle of Hurricane Katrina or an F5 tornado. Uh, or uh, any other, um, yeah, what could you call that? Um, any other moving spiral. You know, anything that's being um, um, uh, dragged through friction will end up doing the same exact thing. It starts off this way, but as it slows down, it comes, becomes less and less capable because it's losing velocity. And yeah, there's a pattern. So what? <laughs> so fucking what? Not a miraculous discovery. Not like the secret hidden uh, perfection of the universe. I, I mean, it's like striking a match and saying, look at the flame, it's a miracle. When if you know the chemistry, you're saying, no, no, it's not a miracle. It's not a surprise. It's not even at all even interesting once you know the chemistry. Or when the Schauberger's water spouts, or the way the water drains down your toilet. Okay? Those galaxies? Or galaxies, or super galaxies. It has everything to do. So, and again, I don't think they have any evidence that galaxies are doing anything like that. Um, and the galaxies may, in fact, be the opposite. It could be, and the galaxies are something that was highly compressed, actually expanding its entropy. It's, it's losing pressure, not creating pressure. It's not storing energy, it's releasing energy. With the way things are formed and distributed. So you can see them in space. Uh. Loop-de-doop-de-doop-de-doo. Right, see if there's any more comments. Every subject just turns to shit with these people. All right, you said the units are based on effects. Okay, so he hasn't said anything else, so we'll get rid of them. All right, two nutters done with. Again, the agenda here is pointing out how my model doesn't work and are proving how the conventional model is correct. I'm not here to evaluate your religion. Tell, I have to explain to you why your religion is crap. Stupid. <laughs> you know, that you've wasted your brain um, in your pursuit of your silly nonsensical, human-centric, magical belief system. <clears throat> the universe is dumb and simple. Period. Uh, one of which is like called the graviton. <laughs> That's another particle that somebody made up. 
the question you have to ask yourself is, as these... So again, all these people are so hostile to particles. Why are they so hostile when everything around us indicates separate particle? There's 7 billion human particles on the face of the earth. I mean, everything indicates that there's clumps of stuff. And yet <laughs> they're obnoxious to the idea. What, the fundamental mechanism is a clumpy thing that makes clumps? The clumps make clumps? No, can't be. It must be that it's all the magic fluid. This is just magic fluid that's stickier. Things become more, more, more complex in their construction. You know, what rules apply to govern this interaction? There are five that we know for sure. And they operate at every scale as far as we can tell. Okay. Here's what they are. Thanks. Good. One of them is called punctuated equilibrium. <laughs> hey, so that's uh, uh, Gould's word. That's um, punctuated equilibrium really doesn't sound like what it really is. But anyway, so we'll let him, let him describe it, see what he comes up with. In the sand pile model, these avalanches do not occur. Yeah. Yeah. Punctuated equilibrium. Everything's going along fine. You're building your sand pile. And it doesn't just kind of go away in one place a little bit at a time. It goes, all of it goes away right now. Punctuated equilibrium. <laughs> well, that really doesn't happen either way. So, so it's a very bad analogy for punctuated equilibrium is to talk about um, objects that are have adhesion okay so they can either stick to each other because of friction or they can stick to each other because of charge but clearly once they start sticking there's a certain point where they'll be knocked down just like the surface of the earth you can't make a mountain too tall because frankly the gravity will just wipe it out it'll say it'll get to a point where it says that's not going to be able to that, that's not acceptable and it'll crush it the pressure will be unequalized enough of an unequalization that it, it will be doomed statistically over time not to survive and um but again that's not really punctuated equilibrium in the evolutionary sense big changes occur very quickly there's no ramp up uh, so of course there is a ramp up <clears throat> it's just a matter of um time uh, and probability so eventually, if I put a match in a location, I can slowly raise the temperature. And for every match, there'll be a subtly different temperature that will ignite the match. But that's only because of the circumstantial, how much heat is already in the match or how much, how much of the chemistry is charged. So the more charge it has in it, the quicker it will ignite, the less charged, the less quick. You know, more ions, quicker, less ions, slower. But there's rules to all of it. There's no surprises in any sense. But there's some issues with that, which makes it very interesting. So these changes in complexity occur either as increasing complexity or as catastrophic annihilation quickly, not gradually. But we also <laughs> so again, just nonsense. So everything's a build up to the outcome. Every bomb in a sense, explodes kind of slowly, you know, if you really looked at it mechanically. So, no, is that for every avalanche of a certain magnitude, there are X number of other similar events of a smaller magnitude that is related to the original one logarithmically. Oh, whatever. That's all nonsense. I wish you'd get to the other far four because this first principle is idiotic. <laughs> Just to wait. There's a logarithmic power law relationship between avalanche events. We see that in nature. If you All right, we have some new idiot comments. So, uh, the place of math in physics is to create models that generalize experiments. So again, they don't. They create models that just generalize outcomes. They're formulas describing effects. They're not formulas describing causes. 
Huygens isn't in the math. You do Huygens before the math. Okay, the math is just the sine theta, which is just an angle. So there's lots of causes for an angle change. You don't need Huygens as, oh, that's the only way to explain sine theta. No, there's other ways to explain the sine theta. For example, the inverse square law tells us that the force will be at a bunch of distances, even though we don't have to measure the force at every distance individually. Yes, the inverse square law tells you the effect. Again, Newton, who discovered the inverse square law, who discovered that that's how it works, didn't tell you how it happens. He just told you it does happen. And what we're arguing about is how it happens. Because now they say bent space creates the inverse square law. When, in fact, an external radiant force would exactly duplicate the inverse square law. It's exactly consistent. Go to the Lesage page there. Now, I won't do it, but you can read it right on the Lesage page. It fits the inverse square law. Mach gravity does the inverse square law. So again, you're just bullshitting, okay? Math is not causes. Math is effects. Math doesn't define who did it. Math isn't relevant to the detective. You take the distribution of earthquakes along the fault zone. You take the distribution of tornadoes, hurricanes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, any naturally occurring event. When you map those, you find that not only is there a logarithmic distribution with regard to frequency or magnitude, but when you plot those, that becomes a single line with a single slope. It's <clears throat> just crap. Obviously, if we had such a plot, then we could make predictions regarding what's going to happen. And our, the best our predictions can be is well, in the next thousand years, there's a 50% chance. <laughs> That's the best we can do. It's not a curve. So when you do the plot uh, jump ahead of, percent of a perfect Fibonacci distribution all the way to All forward. right, so more fucking Fibonacci crap. You know, there's a special code to the universe, pi over psi over multiply by pi, chi di by by phi by. There, that's the mystery key to the universe, the super code. Oh, man, this is, this, is, I, this is where Ken Wheeler, I guess, gets his little bits of nuttery. It's a little, little pile of nuttery here, a little pile of nuttery there, and he puts it all together. And it's true for every constellation we know about, and it's true for every galaxy that we know about, right. where these organizational functions take place. That's why uh, there are back. archetypal forms. All right, so there's no truth in it. There's no Fibonacci code. And it's none of this bullshit is true. It's horse shit. And here's how archetypal they are. You familiar with a thing called the Bose-Einstein condensate? You ever heard of that? Uh, let's see if I have a picture of it here. It's like a hell of a compound. There it is. Now I want you to look at that picture. Oh, that's a that's a that's an image of a Bose Einstein condensate. The guys who created that product deserved and got the Nobel Prize in physics. What this is is all the matter that remains in a hard vacuum, a virtually perfect vacuum, with only just a few molecules of anything at one-tenth of one degree above absolute zero, point one Kelvin. Yeah, we have no evidence that exists anywhere in the known universe, blah, 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 so just more horseshit. <laughs> yes, whatever. Fine. So he thinks a piece of horseshit, no evidence that exists, no evidence that there's any such thing as a vacuum, anything, energy thing. There's just either there are, is stuff or there isn't stuff. There's no, you know, consent, uh, condensate, miraculous condensate. Product of underlying interactions 
is in the 26 hadrons that make up the nuclear particles. Below that scale, there is no gravitational field effect, none. What that tells us is that mass is a product. So more irrelevancy here. <clears throat> Measure the force at every distance individually, right? So I already pointed out that that's a model of effects. I wonder if you're downplaying the necessity of mathematics. Again, how is it necessary is, is my argument. I've done experiments. I've done, I've done, I've worked in a machine shop in a place where we built robots. And I'll tell you that every innovation wasn't the byproduct of doing mathematics. It was a byproduct of trial and error uh, as an excuse for not having to do the work. No, no, no. I, again, you know, yeah, I, I really have no interest in spending two years trying to derive equations that don't really produce answers, that just produce an equation that nobody ever solves anyway. Now, clearly, there's people who can do Einstein's whatever field equations, for example. I've never seen them actually do it with actual numbers. So I've never even seen them actually do this math to any effect at all. So that's all just sort of bullshit. Secondly, I don't give a shit about the math. There's nothing in my theory that says the math is wrong. There is no inverse square law. There is no sine theta even in the two slit experiment. My, ma my theory doesn't say sine, there's no sine theta. My theory says it isn't caused by Huygens and Heisenberg. So again, this argument that somehow I have to come up with new math if I have new physics is idiotic. I'm not disputing the effects for fuck's sake. How many times can I say that? I'm not disputing the effects demonstrated in experiments. I'm disputing their preposterously silly definition of causes. As, as stated, my theory of an external pressure just even as Suskind, okay, Suskind from California uh, uh, University, his description of it as fluid dynamics would be exactly the same if he pushes the fluid in or if he pulls the fluid out. So they believe it's a pull, the fluid is pulled, a negative convergence, as he calls it. There's a negative convergence, <laughs> whatever that means. Um, and um, <clears throat> so what he's basically just saying is it's convergence that, uh, what, what is he used? This is another term, but anyway. So, so his argument is, is that it's a pull force. When the mathematics would be exactly the same if you just create the pressure on the outside. It works identically. So don't you understand? That's how simple this is. I'm arguing it's a push reality. They're arguing it's a pull reality. That's the fundamental difference here. And I'm arguing with a push reality, you can unify all of physics. You can't do it with pull. You don't understand this? So this mathematics thing is a fucking uh, straw man. It's a fucking red herring. I'm not disputing mathematics. I'm not disputing the effects of experiments. I'm disputing their fucking interpretation of the fucking causes. All right, a common tactic among your fellow greatest scientists ever. Okay, well, fuck off, fuckhead. I haven't done any of that shit. Uh, I've pointed out how the electric universe is bullshit for trying to say Einstein math is garbage merely because he does the obvious, which is he puts a test charge uh, in the mathematics. You can't do the math unless you put a second body in the math to experience the gravity. There's no fucking formula without it. I've said these exact words, and yet you're sitting there lying, saying I'm doing this thing that they do. They attack the mathematics. Where have I attacked any mathematics, you cunt? I've merely pointed out that the Schrodinger equation isn't a wave equation. It's an angle equation. Is, is that attacking the mathematics? Or is it just pointing out that they're totally misnaming it? It doesn't have a wave in it anywhere. There's no fucking wave in the formula. There's a fucking angle for fuck's sake. 
You can't tell the difference. Fuck you. Liar. This is really not what I want to spend my time doing. But I mean, really, there's just these people are they don't listen to a fucking thing I say. They don't pay a fucking bit of attention. They're just doing this obnoxious jackassery where they're telling me I'm attacking the mathematics of physics when I'm not doing that. Fuck. Lie, lie, lie. Found in, in the universe. So he measured for nonlinearity and he got that result. And just as a matter of interest, he changed the experiment and measured for linearity, and he got that result. And then he did the same thing that Alan Aspect did oh, with electrons in a double slit experiment. He set it up so that it would operate in both modes, and the only thing that changed was his choice from the same source. And when he decided to measure for linearity, it was linearity. When he decided to measure for circularity, that's the result he got. So something you well, why don't you prove that by just linking through the video of that experiment, right? That should be easy enough to do if he has some some two slit experiment. But yeah, we already know there's no measuring for linearity, so that's a bullshit concept. There's things happening here. Either the human mind, in its function, is coupling with that source 15 billion years ago. To oh, horseshit! No, it's happening. Polarization filters don't aren't good detection devices because they also fuck up the thing that goes through them. They're not harmless to photons. So you can't use polarization filters and say, I've detected something and that's all I did. I just detected because you interfered. You've changed the photons. Act. You've altered them. The filter fucks them up. Alter the course of the photon in a way that is without time and distance. There's the same photon from the same... So now we have this spooky action at a distance horseshit, but we don't have any evidence of it. Just babbly talk about the superluminal forces communicating and making things happen blah 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 and yet over you know a billion years of evolution of little monsters on planet earth none of those little monsters figured out how to tap into you know entanglement they never figured out how to become entangled and do super luminal a communication to become even more powerful wouldn't it be really good if the ants could do super luminal and communication? You know, they didn't have to rely on stupid slow chemistry and they could, you know, know instantaneously among each other when the termites are attacking. And yes, it would be. Lots of legwork would be saved. But no, evolution, yeah, no, it just, it just somehow missed that chemistry to take advantage of source can't operate in both modes at the same time at least not according to what we know so it works at all scales la 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 it works at all scales yeah, it works this does that does everything does this everything's great everything's wonderful we got superpowers we got super this we got super that you got nothing you got a little bit of a belly oh god i hate this planet all right, so another person worth uh, you know, castrating from this channel. You said, with a you, isn't that cute? You are watching the Feynman lectures. No, I said I'm reading them. I have watched them all repeatedly many times. I'm reading the book that has a little more detail in it. See, these people cannot pay any attention whatsoever. <sighs> have I seen <laughs> the ones of quantum mechanics? I don't know. Have you? I haven't so wanted to know. I haven't so wanted to know if they are a waste of time. 
there's two sets of lectures you can watch. The ones made in like 68 or something, and then the ones made in like 70 something. Maybe the others were 50 something, 58, 59. And the other ones were made in 1980. All right, anyway, there's Auckland, Auckland, uh, New Zealand. So if you type in Auckland and Feynman, you'll get the modern. Well, there's another one he did in California, the Loop to Do Institution. But that really wasn't as, it wasn't this, the real quantum mechanics. <laughs> yeah, it was the loop de doer version. So it's a lot less fun to watch. Um, so both of them are good lectures. So the early ones were just gravity and uh, the two-slit experiment. And, um, you know, it was pretty good. And then in the later one, he did Newton's glass experiments and got more into his, you know, his improvement of the mathematics in terms of doing this rotating clock idea that the pattern recycles so if you just rotate a clock it'll give you the you know because the pattern is a cycle you know and so it simplifies understanding the mathematics in a way it, that's what i got out of it anyway but yeah so they're good both of them are good they're worth your time if that's what you're saying neither one of them is a waste of time I mean, Feynman, it wasn't a dumbass. I mean, he says intelligent things. <laughs> Just some of it is wrong. But the Auckland one was where he clearly states photons aren't a wave. They're a, they're a corpuscle. I mean, he says it overtly. Hey, I saw your vids regarding anti-bullshit, man. Well, I don't know what this has to do with anything. Yeah, we look anti bullshit man and me don't agree about some things and but generally speaking we agree about 98% of everything and he's just an anal you know word lunatic and if you don't say anything exactly the way he wants you to say it then he gets all hysterical thoughts on Alex Jones no we're not doing this again um, you know obviously Alex Jones was warned repeatedly I, I i got a channel completely annihilated i got two channels my main in mendham channel was deleted for an entire year it was more than that even by youtube all right i didn't commit any crimes i didn't suggest anybody become a terrorist my do not god channel was annihilated for a stupid graphic a figure art drawing that didn't even have a, a vagina just penciled in nipples <laughs> okay so what do you want me to cry for for alex jones he he incites people to harass people who haven't been convicted of crimes um which in my opinion should be a crime um and he's you know overtly violates the rules then he violates the policy by getting around it you know in the sense of the strike policy he decides to put his videos on another channel which is violating YouTube's policies. I mean, what's my thought? My thought is they should have done it a long time ago because they treat me a hell of a lot worse. <laughs> so fuck it. Yeah, he should be treated the same way I was treated. All right. But fuck you. This isn't the place for it, jackass. I don't care what you think. Alex Jones is a blight. I mean, the fact that you are worried about Alex Jones. Alex Jones is a preposterous lying sack of shit. He doesn't believe any of this crap. And what are you, some kind of gay bashing lunatic? What do you think the fucking goddamn, oh, the trannies are coming to get you. How so, jackass? What exactly are they taking from you? What, are they stealing all your juju bees or something? What the fuck are you in a panic about, you fucking lunatic? I gotta just block you for that. Fuck you. Go choke on Trump's dick, you fucking lunatic. Oh. Hate people. <sighs> She's just no, this doesn't get any better. 
is there anyone rational out there capable of rational conversation anyone hello 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 anyone are you all imba fucking souls it's complimentary half emerge and if you want to see how they're connected take one drop of ink and drop it in the water and you can take a picture of it the ink goes right down that filament that comes right up the other side you can <laughs> where did he make that up <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello? What? <laughs> what a pile of shit. You do that all by yourself. That's how scalar communications is going to operate. We're going to build communications devices that do that. So he thinks there's instantaneous action. He's going to create the magical, I can talk to Saturn uh, without any time delay. Yes, of course, there's nobody on Saturn, so it'd be a completely useless device. But yes, won't that be cool? Oh, man. Like, even if we had instantaneous communication, it would do us very little good. <laughs> because where brains work really slow. Really fucking slow. <laughs> you know, we really just don't need instantaneous because it takes us so long to process stuff anyway. Holographically. Oh, it's a hologram That's how too. We're going to do it. Oh yeah. And the You're going to do it. Drop of ink. Yeah. Why don't you get to it then? No wires. No radio frequency. Purely holographic. We built them. We know they work. Ah, he's built the magical holographic uh, transmitterizer. It doesn't require any energy, and it just works on entanglement. I pinch your nipple. Uh, uh, uh. Can you feel a little? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> They'll probably get it wrong the first try, and you know, you'll, I'll pinch my nipple, and you'll feel your anus go. Doo -doo. Yeah, so it probably won't work at first. Fucking, anus. fucking lunatics. Galaxies of stars. So you know this organizational thing. This is my favorite one of all time. This is the, called the Sombrero Galaxy. And what the Sombrero <laughs> Galaxy demonstrates is they look. Look at it. Yeah, it looks like an, something exploding, not something converging. That should be the first thing it says to you. Yeah, that looks like something that just farted. <laughs> you know, the Sombrero is just the gas. You know, the, the, you don't want to be smelling that part. Oops. Get it from edge on. And you can see the ring. Yeah, we can only see it on one edge. We don't get to see it this way and that way because it moves so fucking slow. You'd need like 10,000 years to see it. And we didn't have cameras 10,000 years ago. We didn't have telescopes. Didn't have any of that shit. So we don't have any 10,000 year ago picture of the Sombrero Galaxy. And 10,000 years probably isn't even enough time to be able to see it move. So the whole thing is kind of silly. Of galaxies around this nursery for stars. The center of this baby is the birthplace of stars. Again, this is all just talk. But certainly I'm not opposed to the idea that the stars are fragments being ripped off of the binary component inside of all the galaxies that's why the galaxies have arms is because they are in fact binary and the binary systems have shear in them they're shearing bits off of each other constantly that's what makes galaxies yes but it's something flying apart not something pulling together and when they're formed that whole dynamic operates just like high density charge clusters High density charge clusters, just like a high density charge cluster. There is no fucking set. It might as well just say, just just like a torpedo cu cupcake. <laughs> you know, might as well just take any two words and throw them together. You know, a stick fart. You know, it's just, it's just, just stupid. They just throw words, just like a flip flapper. You know, booger nose hair. It's exactly the same set of dynamics in a form that's 500 million light years in diameter. 
<clears throat> the same dynamics as the not really a real thing in the small universe. Not a real thing at all. There's no such real thing like the Sombrero Galaxy. There ain't one of those in the little universe. I mean, it's just so spectacular. It's breathtaking. La, and that's la, the la. universe we live in. But those are the rules. Yes, the rules are uh, scalary thingy stuff. Wherever you have local linear effects, you must have Non-local, non-linear effects. You yeah. okay. local linear effects. What the fuck is that? What is a local linear effect? It's jargon, jargon, jargon. Yeah. Why do these fucktards post fucking idiotic comments on this fucking idiot's video? He's got 217 likes and 15 dislikes, and he's talking absolute shit. Absolute shit. It's a miracle. It's a miracle our brains, our, supposed to be, even work. Why? Why is it a miracle? Billions of years of evolution. They're supposed to do logic pretty good. Raccoons know how to do certain things and to eat and wash their hands and do all this kind of crap. Every organism seems to be pretty fucking competent. Fucking goddamn house cat can live outside and survive. All kinds of things can do all kinds of things. They seem all pretty fucking competent. There's absolutely nothing wrong with our brains except the crap you shitheads put in it. You indoctrinate your children with fairy tales and nonsense. You, you brainwash them into thinking they're spirits and gods and... There's little evil homosexuals behind every tree. Whatever bullshit you fucking inject into fucking people's brains. Your stupid love is cactus crap. What does that even mean, love is cactus? It's fucking retarded gibberish. You talk crap, you end up thinking crap. All right. God. How badly evolution has made them. An amazingly stupid fucking comment. I'll delete. I won't block it yet, but that's, you know how fucking stupid that is? Our brains are an incredibly, look, look at the fucking brain, a brain of an ant, a brain of a praying mantis. It's the tiniest motherfucking thing. And this fucking organism in this very short lifespan can do things you can't do and it can do them really fucking well. It can fly it can move six different legs it can stalk it can grab it can eat efficiently it can do all of this shit it can know the difference between nutritious guts and stupid wings that i don't need to bother eating i mean god damn you're such an asshole all right you should care about free speech alex jones isn't doing free speech he's threatening people you, don't, you think that's free speech. You think it's free speech to tell other people that they're trying to get you. They're trying to take away your freedom. And they haven't done any such fucking thing. He's, the way he's prosecuted those, those people who lost their children in that school shooting and called these parents who, lost, who had their kids murdered and to call them crisis actors, to call them fakes. Would you want that to happen to you? Your kids get killed. And you have some cunt who's going to say, I'm pretending my kids really didn't die. You don't find that unacceptably obnoxious. And YouTube should put its stamp of approval on that. And on top of that, in the sense that this asshole is actually suggesting that people should go attack these people. You don't think that's insane. You're really fucking dumb then. All right. I mean, to say Alex Jones never incited anyone to violence is the most idiotic statement ever made in the history of mankind. He rants and raves about how they're coming to get you. They're coming to get your rights. They're trying to put you in. He talks about these coffins that the government has with your name already written on them. All this crap to incite violence against the government. That's all he does is incite fucking violence, you lunatic. It's his whole fucking channel is devoted to the purpose of inciting crazy people to do crazy things. You're already stupid enough to listen to that lunatic. I mean, I just can't believe you would post on... on you're just too fucking stupid for words.
Mason Everland. I bet he has no content on his channel. They're coming to get your freedom, and you probably don't even have content on your channel. I don't want to do it in a new window. I don't want to lose the crazy person. Yeah, no content. So they're coming for your freedom, and you have nothing to say. <laughs> yeah. Fucking... I mean, you, it, it's just liar. I mean, Alex Jones is the biggest liar ever on YouTube. I mean, just everything is a fucking lie. Everything he says, everything he's done, it's all premised on lie after lie after lie. He's a bigger liar than Trump. And that's a big fucking liar. I don't know how any asshole could defend Alex Jones. No, they can't keep it science related. Their brains are really tiny and they don't know any science. <laughs> okay, I don't know why they show up here. I don't know what they're doing here. They're stupid motherfuckers. Ugh. And these are the same people who defend corporations and private ownership and they're complaining about what private companies are doing. I mean, isn't that so fucking ironic? They want a privately owned system. They want Stefan Molyhew to own everything and him to decide who should have free speech. So they want the very dictatorship, the corporate dictatorship. That's what they want. And now they're complaining because they don't have rights on their corporate dictatorship. They won't suggest the government should create anything, a public library. They don't want public libraries. They don't want to finance a single public institution. They don't want to protect any rights with a, a public minimum, like having a, a right to uh, like a universal health care in the sense of having a, a single payer, you know, the government. They don't want, they, no, they want a bunch of private insurance companies, a bunch of shysters and crooks manipulating uh, charts to steal a few extra dollars. They want this materialism capitalist system, and then they complain that the capitalists don't love them. You know, it's, the irony is fucking laughable. I mean, I hope the right wing makes their own video site because it would be hilarious. Their own Facebook, their own little special corner of the world where they could be comfortable and safe. Oh, God. Must at all scale. They are inextricably interrelated by the dynamic of creation. Apparently, he has birds. Great idea. The world works in a dynamic system. Creation. Yeah, so it's just creation theory, just more religion. No, the universe is some sort of really thing. It's connected and it's all work. And we're all part of the magical connected connectedness. La, 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 la. Religion all over the fucking place. Just religion, religion, religion. Everybody's a religious nut. That is at every moment being created and uncreated in a cycle. Uncreated. Again, they can't even use any kind of rational language. I mean, you know, this unning everything, you know. Uh, oh, it's on, on. It's on and on, on. <laughs> you know, this perfectly good off word. Oh, no, I can't use that. That's a conventional word. So I have to use on, on. So it's on and on, on and on, on. I mean, created and uncreated. <laughs> it's like, like erased before it was born. That's like an abortion. So there's creation and abortions. Every instant, everywhere, being created and uncreated. And then uh, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm, I just, what do you counter space? I mean, it's just, <laughs> God, I just want, I, I want to get a brick and just bash my head in. I mean, it's just, uh, how did I get on this fucking planet of fucking crack shit lunatics? God. Damn. This is so wrong. I mean, how, how is this? How can people be this fucking insane? 217 likes to 16 dislikes. 
everybody likes this uncreated concept. Oh yeah, I'm totally for that uncreation thing. Yeah, totally get it. Like, totally. Uh, it varies depending on the scale of organization, and it varies on in terms of you know where you're where you're looking at. But it operates. Uh, we think our calculations tell us that it operates at the opposite end of the Planck constant. <clears throat> that the wave length. Is 10 to the minus 33. <laughs> the, the, the opposite end of the point constant. I mean, <laughs> okay, it's just more on off. Yeah, we won't say on, we'll say on off. Yeah, that's even better. The opposite end of the Planck constant. I mean, how can you how can you do something like that? The opposite end of the small constant, the smallest scale. Somehow that tells you what the biggest scale is. Is that the opposite end? Because there's a plank small, there must be a plank large. Yeah, that's not necessarily true. I mean, there's clearly in our universe, there seems to be limitations. I mean, galaxies can get really big, but they can't get really, really big, right? They don't get really, really big. And suns get big, but they don't get really, really big. So there always are something that stops something from getting too fucking big. But I would say that's because of the Planck constant. The very fact that there is a constant means that you can only put so much of this stuff next to each other before it blows up. For centimeters. You can only create so much pressure, right? It's back to this gravity argument. You can only create so much pressure. When you create uh, enough, enough thickness or density of matter, you actually do block the gravity and all you have is the chemical pressure and um, the chemical pressure won't hold the atoms together it holds atoms it sticks atoms themselves to each other but the chemical pressure can't keep the nucleus of the atoms together so once you once you create a dense enough material you consume all of the gravity and you create a lot of chemical pressure, but you lose the pressure inside. The electricity of the atom is lost, the magnetism. So now you don't have anything holding the atoms together, so the atoms explode. I think it's a very viable theory, actually, why you can't get too, can't make too black a hole, or it blows the fuck up. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. which means that it's operating at 10 to the 33 cycles per second, which is 10 to the 33 cycles per second. I can just make up any number of cycles per second. Actually, I could make 10 to the minus 33 plus 64 times 10 to the infinity cycles per second. And that still would be a real cycle. It is an infinite number of positive integers. <laughs> so I can just make any number of cycles a second I want, 10 to the 58. 10 to the 948 cycles per second. I can invent any amount of time. Mighty damn fast. Oh, <laughs> 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 it's amazingly fast. It's not instantaneous though, but it's like almost instantaneous, like half of an instantaneous. You, it's getting really close to instantaneous. It's like half the instantaneous is in, it's like half of an infinity. It's pretty fucking big, half of infinity. <laughs> I mean, they're entertaining themselves with their own gibberish. They're just smelling their own little dirty diapers. As close to infinity as you get. After 33 zeros, you don't. No, I guess it's not the closest you could get. Because you could have 66 zeros. That would be closer. And then you could have 948 zeros. And that would be a little closer. Yeah. So you see, now you look at science with a different pair of eyes. Oh, fuck. He calls this science. This is religion. It is not science. It is religion. He's just doing Hari Krishna, Hari, Hari, Hari. Scalar, 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 scalar. Same thing. Light is not the upper limit 
to the velocity of data transport. And there's absolutely no evidence, though, that it isn't. Just absolutely no evidence whatsoever. Not a single shred of anything called an evidence. Not a single piece of anything called evidence. Just like the evidence of God. There's no evidence whatsoever. Fairy tale, fantasy, bullshit. No evidence whatsoever. Not one single hair, fiber. Nothing to collect. You can vacuum it all day long, and you're not going to get any God's pubic hairs. Just nothing. There will be no evidence at the crime scene on the planet of this God creator thing. Nothing. No placenta left over from the creation. Nothing. No umbilical cords. Nothing. No fossilized, uh, <laughs> you know, God placenta. Never was, but the construct is wrong. And gravity is not an underlying field effect, it's a product. Therefore, it can be mitigated. Everything's a product. Newsflash, or another useless terminology. Let's call it a product. It's every single thing in a cause and effect universe. Everything's a product. Everything. Of something. Everything is a caused effect. All right, nothing else. Uh, Jenna, ooh, it's a girl. Cool. Let's see if she has any videos. Exercise videos. Yeah, I like that. I haven't seen a girl exercise video in a while. Oh, she has this very nice picture. I remember her now. <laughs> yeah, nice cow video. Really nice. Oh, look, in Mendham videos, unintelligent design. Now, that's a great fucking video from a great channel show. Yeah. Let's play a little bit of it. Just I haven't seen it in a while. This is, you know, great video, though. Love this video. Unintelligent design is going to create huge volumes of waste <laughs> and sloppiness. There's going to be paint on the walls, food on the floor, however you want to metaphor it. But the retard ain't going to do it right. And there's going to be a mess made. And that's the dilemma of the true atheist is accepting the fact that he's part of a big waste engine an engine that has 99 times more friction than function Crew <laughs> i love that <laughs> 99 times more friction than function <sighs> oh. Oh, oh, oh yeah that was good mm. forces in control of precious commodities ah, <laughs> crude forces in control of precious commodity ah. Brilliant. Fucking, that is Shakespeare, for fuck's sake. That is fucking brilliant. Ah, uh, now we get this creepy. That's the real game. Bar, 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 bar. So all these little happy, pappy, sing songy, pink balloon chasing, life is fun, 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 atheists are basically not atheists. They obviously think they're accomplishing something as main part of something's finger painting. Yes, the crude universe just made a bunch of fucking crocodiles and it put some of them in pretty little fursuits and some of the crocodiles can sing and dance and yeah, but it's all crocodiles for fuck's sake. You should be awestruck at four billion years. You should be contemplating the idea of these organisms eating each other. All the wrong ways things could have gone. I, mean, I should have said two billion years, but world still could be dominated by dinosaurs. It wasn't for a stupid meteor impact. There'd be no grace or beauty or dignity or art. It'd be a crude, dirty, ugly, it'd be a bug planet. <laughs> yeah, and the truth is, <clears throat> see, there's a little bit of science I'll throw in here with this whole global warming thing. See, the dinosaurs, I think, were doomed. So even without the, the asteroid theory that, you know, really sealed the deal in the sense that... Uh, you know, it killed so much vegetation that the food sources just ran out. And so any big organisms couldn't survive because it just wasn't enough food. Um, but the truth is, is that the during the entire Jurassic period, the carbon was being sunk. So that's when the oil was being put into the ground and the coal. So all of the the heat of the atmosphere and all of the methane being created by these huge organisms was creating a greenhouse cycle that was actually sinking because there was so much moisture. It was putting everything in a bog. 
and the bogs were essentially going to become um, a bunch of dead organisms, plants mostly, but dead organisms, dead uh, trapped solar energy that couldn't get free again. It was being trapped. It was being sunk. It was a carbon sink. So all the carbon was being sunk. So inevitably, through entropy, the planet was doomed in a sense to have to get colder because the carbon is necessary for you to create this whole energy cycle. So without the carbon moving through the cycle, you can't transfer the energy. So this, the planet essentially just reflects it. And so it's essential that you have the free carbon in the atmosphere to crap the energy. And so that was, a, so in a sense, the ice age, the first early ice age, which might have been 200 million years ago, is what killed the dinosaurs. The fact that the plant just got too cold for big fat organisms, big giant ones. As it would be, life isn't all anything. It's a whole pile of shit that happens over years. That's the way we live a life, over a period of years. We know where 99.999% of life has been for the whole history of life on Earth. Yes, what is the average life on Earth? The average life is a fucking goddamn frog. <laughs> you know, it's not a great time. It's a fly. It's a bug. It's a maggot. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> all right, enough of that. Great stuff, though. Proud to have that on my tombstone. <laughs> you know, they could just the tombstone could just say that Gary made this video. I mean, he made the he made the <laughs> he wrote the script for it. He didn't compose it, but he wrote the script. All right, so that's it. Still no other comments. Okay. So I think we're done here, right? I don't think there's any point in dragging this out. I don't know if there's anything. Let's see what he says at the end here. How he sums up. To talk about this stuff. I mean, where does the term why bias come from? It is, it is a fabrication that connotes the interact. Connotes. <laughs> I make fun of words all the time. But that I'm making fun of them. So I'll say them wrong on purpose for fun. But connotes of one aggregation of information in whatever form with another aggregation of information in some other form. One of them flows along an x-axis, one of them flows along a y-axis, and the angularity of their interaction is dispositive. Dispositive, so another completely silly word. Thank you. Uh, dispositive, unpositive, null positive. Um, repositive. <laughs> it's just, oh man, pathetic. What we discover is that when particles, photons, information packets intersect, interact, collide, which never happens. There's no evidence that photons hit each other, that they interact in any way whatsoever. Just no evidence of that happening. It's just horseshit. At a certain angle, the likelihood that they would breach that threshold and become self-organized into a higher state of complexity. Oh, yes. They'll self-organize into a toaster oven with crocodile skin. Through self-organization. They don't even have to evolve. They just self-organize. Yeah, of course. They self-organized. Hey. I did all myself. <laughs> so even with our big giant brain, we can't self-do anything. We have to learn how to play the piano. We have to learn how to piss. I mean, we have to learn how to do everything. Uh, but Hey, the photons don't have to, but they can self-organize. Cool. Is much higher than if they intersect at a nominal angle. The angularity function of interaction is as important as any of the other components. 
the angularity function. I'd say certainly there's some angles have something to do with the universe, but not in any way this, this, this idiot's talking. And that's why, for example, in Japan, there's a guy named Minato who designed a permanent magnet DC motor to uninvert his penis. Yes, but it didn't work. That produces the same shaft torque as a conventional motor at one tenth the consumption of amperage. Pile of shit again, more shit. Guess what? One tenth the percent of amperage doesn't mean anything if you have to increase the voltage by 10%, right? So, I mean, 10 times. So, increasing the voltage 10 times and decreasing the amperage, yes, that'll get you the same result. That's like the frequency versus, uh, you know, wavelength bullshit. So that doesn't mean anything. So anybody who knows anything about energy knows you have to put it in the form of watts, watts or horsepower or some other um, constant. Or what you're saying is gibberish. It has to be about a product. Amps aren't the product. They're the thing that goes into the equation before you get a product. And the way he did that was by taking his permanent magnets away from the typical perpendicular E field, B field intersection and angled at 54 degrees to 22 degrees. And that angularity optimized. 54 to 22, whatever that means. It's either one or the other, jackass. You can't have both angles at the same time. So again, more science fiction, right? I mean, that, this is pseudoscience, but I mean, just saying, just more... Oh, yes, there's a really efficient motor out there that nobody has access to because the Japanese guy with the inverted penis doesn't want to be a trillionaire. This is the interaction between the fields and eliminates cogging in the motor. And now Toyota is using those motors in all of their heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems in their automobiles. Why aren't they using them to run the automobile? It's 10 times more efficient. Why don't they just put it in the car? So you look, I got a 10 times more efficient motor. And we need a tiny little battery to run it. Because then we can send it. Why is it a DC motor? Yeah. 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 He's a cello player. Brushless or brushless? Uh, it has brushes. They're working on a brushless option. But it's a fabulous technology. Just more bullshit. I'm just saying bullshit, 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 bullshit. Complete made up, pulled out of his ass, bullshit. Bullshit. I should buy a Toyota because it has it has a really efficient air conditioner and fan. <laughs> yeah, that's really important. Uh, how much how much how much how many pennies a day is it saving me? That's 10 to the 47 joules more than the, all the power produced by the sun and its life expectancy. All right, so I got to hear this. So there's some source of energy more powerful than the sun. See, it changes everything. It changes everything. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah. The final product of this refrigeration. So give me, a, give me an array of Peltier chips and I'll turn it into heat. <laughs> so there's nothing fancy i have some pilty air chips um and um they're not doing anything extraordinary they, they're just um they're the same thing as a um, thermocouple um so they just convert heat into uh electricity and that's it and if you reverse them they'll create refrigeration on one side and heating on one side so they'll basically just they'll just dissipate the they'll do the equal but opposite reaction thing essentially and they're just doing it like our engine does it in the sense they're trying to push one thing on one side and one thing on the other but you still have heat and you still have cold and you still have to put energy in they don't create energy but they can um, work like a thermocouple in the sense you can create voltage by heating them. Give me a, give me a, a thermodynamic, a thermoelectric uh, chip. Uh, and I'll turn it into electricity. <clears throat> right, and it'd be 
totally not miraculous and totally not terribly efficient. So what's, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't have value. That's why I bought them. They have value, but they're not going to generate anything. They're just going to be able to convert something at a friction price. You will have waste. I mean, we've got all the underlying pieces. But what this does is drive the efficiency curve. We have a major breakthrough in the materials, in the technology, for every rate of efficiency that you're operating with. At some point... So none of that shit has happened, right? We, <clears throat> we gained a lot of efficiency in the last 30 years. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, it's, you know, it's a marginal part of the cost, the total cost. But, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> computers, some of them are highly efficient. Um, obviously, tablets and stuff, 10 watts, you know, to do a lot of computing. Very efficient. Feynman's theoretical model that says there's 10 to the 80 joules of energy in every cubic centimeter of space. That <clears throat> um uh, well, you, you know, you're, again, if you could just e extract every single bit of pressure in every single atom in every cubic centimeter. So, again, that's just E equals MC squared. And the MC squared is really important. The C squared part is a preposterously huge number. So you can sort of get that mass is related to um, C squared, an amount of energy. So... Yes, inside of atoms is a lot of energy, a lot of pressure looking to expand. Lots of little bits you can release. Lots of photons trapped. That's effectively what matter is. It's little bits moving the speed of light that are trapped. And if you release them, a lot of energy in every atom. That's the potential that's driven by the physical vacuum to form the physical world. And All right, so the vacuum did it, when that's not what Feynman was saying. So I don't think Feynman was saying the vacuum is, has any energy in it at all, unless he was talking about dark uh, energy, you know, the, ex the expansion energy that's they assume to be in the universe to explain, uh, to counterbalance what they logically think should be happening which I don't think it really plays a role myself, but I, because they don't really understand that galaxies aren't collapsing. So they don't have some of this stuff right anyway. So how can they make calculations when they're not really understanding whether something's pushing or pulling or whether something's contracting or expanding? You have to get that stuff right before you can make assumptions about what the universe is doing. Maintain it and sustain it. 10 to the 80th joules. That's 10 to the 47 joules more than the, all the power produced by the sun and its ex life expectancy. And, <clears throat> and again, the sun isn't, uh, obviously isn't nuking all of the atoms in the sun. So only a tiny fraction of the energy in the sun is being nuclearized. Just a tiny bit of it's being released. Every cubic centimeter. Now, one thing I want to disabuse you of before I finish is this notion about zero point. Okay. Between the physical vacuum and the time you tap an electron, there are five scales, five discrete scales of organizational complexity. You don't have to go anywhere near the physical vacuum to get power. Anywhere near. So again, it's this idiotic notion that power is something the universe is making when it's no power is what it made and now it's just exchanging energy just converting it from one thing to another thing to another thing to another thing to another thing just like the carbon in the atmosphere it's just going through the cycles oh might as well play the rest of this what you have to do is figure out how to get to the fifth scale and unwind the binding force or introduce some external effect that mitigates 
the binding force between the nucleus and the electron and do it in a way that allows the magnetic potential to precede the charge. That's all you have to do. Uh, or you could just recognize the ping pong paddle analogy, which is basically saying the reason why our electrons repel each other is because there's force, photons trapped between them, bouncing back and forth. The closer you push the electrons, the more energy in the sense of the higher frequency of those bounces, and the further apart they are, the slower the frequency, and that accounts for the difference in the frequency of the photons that are released. And obviously, high pressure electrons are electrons that you've added voltage to, you've pressurized them, and that's why you can create x-rays by compressing atoms. And you have access to all the power you ever want for anything you want to get. That's it. That's not zero point. That's a fifth scale. And then you go to the fourth scale, and you go to the third scale, and go to the first scale, and blah, blah, blah. Just a pile of just all made up crap. Doesn't fit the evidence, doesn't have any evidence, just a made up fable. You can put your puss in boot boots on, and you'll turn into a cat. Oh, that won't do you much good. <laughs> yeah, uh, whatever. So, whatever your magic slippers, and you know, you're Peter Pan. It's the Peter Pan theory. It sounds like almost like what you're describing here in many aspects uh, that that there's a lot of terminology there is that's yeah. needed. That's, yeah, we don't have some language for it. There are still some formulas. Ah, so it's a bunch of old guys. <laughs> yeah, the old farters farting. I'm brain farty. Yes, I fart lots of ways. My brain farts, my ass farts. I fart out of my ears and my nose sometimes. This this guy over here, I just had a big fart. So I'm a little tired. Yeah, my brain's all farted out. Oh, humans are, you know, this getting old thing does suck. But yes, please, as soon as I'm looking like one of these guys, shoot the fuck out of me. So we don't have you ubiquitously available. But the concept is so fundamentally different from what's embodied in the standard model. If you take these concepts and apply them to string theory, you no longer need multidimensionality. Yeah, what, what you need it for when you have five scales of magical stuff in between electrons and nothing. In between the electron and nothing, there's all these scales you can tap with your scale tapper. So what the hell? I don't need no dimensions. I got scales I can put all my rubbish. I need somewhere to sweep uh, my mathematical errors under. Yeah, I just sweep them into one of the scales. Fuck it. I don't need no dimensions. Because non-locality and non-linearity are an essential primary function. So you don't need 11 dimensions and, you know, all that mathematics. Eight eight operations. Yeah, you don't need to obey the conservation of energy rules is all they're saying, right? I mean, when they say this, you don't need non, non-linearity and what was the other term? You know, they're just basically saying, oh, it, 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 it violates conservation, just like gravity, you know, the pull force. In a sense, there's no accounting for where the initial energy came from. So you're sort of violating conservation Be because you're inventing its existence and then watching it die and then saying, you know, doesn't that make sense? <laughs> no, it really doesn't. You still have to account for its creation. I mean, the fact that it dies doesn't mean you can say, I don't have to account for the energy it had to create it. The creation energy is irrelevant. No, it's relevant. There's, you know, 14 Lagrangians and all that stuff. You don't need it. Yeah, it's the denial of consciousness. Yeah, exactly. Denial of locality is a force. Yeah. But, oh, it's a heresy, and it's a, a denial of consciousness. <laughs> fart, 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 fart. That's your brain farting, fellow. Yes, I know you're closing your eyes. Oh, that was a harsh brain fart. Ooh, I, even I smelled that one. Oh, P-U. Yes, that was a stinker. Consciousness is a product. I mean, other guy's chewing his hand. <laughs> you know, he's so far gone, he's eating his hand. Holy shit. 
is exactly the same non-local, non-linear holographic function. Non-linear, non-local, which means I don't have to account for anything because nothing's local. Everything's coming from far away. The distant fairy land is where everything comes from. All that non-local means. Magic world. It came from magic world. As the speciation of an atom. The speciation of an atom. So there's species of atoms. Cool. The difference is that in... Yeah, he's just saying to himself, oh, that was a man. Yeah, that was one of those silent killers. <laughs> you know, I just let loose. Oh, yeah, I don't know if that was a good idea. That was just a little... Oh, oh yeah, that was a bad piece of gas. Brain gas. Well, there isn't a difference because... Where you yeah, because uh, look, I'm making this shit up, but you know, cut me a break, okay? Yeah, all right, that didn't sound right. So, how about this? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. You have a species of identity, you also have individuation. That's fun. Okay, there's speciation, and then there's individuals in the species. Oh, I can go with that. Okay, so there's a hundred or so elements. And each one of them are kind of defined. And then there's individual little elemental atoms. Okay, that seems reasonable. But why the fuck would I say it in this silly manner? <laughs> yeah, this is a silly way to say it. The mentally consistent here. It's fractal. Ah, so somehow that leads to a fractal. So you have species and you have individuals and therefore fractal. No. Crocodiles aren't a fractal. Fundamentally consistent. That's why when Shelbright talks about how is it that birds of a species know, how is it that butterflies know? I mean, oh man, what do they know? I mean, yeah, they. I mean, obviously, I, I'm pretty impressed. Little brain, they can fly, they can do lots of stuff, but they don't really know shit, right? I mean, I put up deer netting, you know, and they find there's some way to get trapped in the deer netting. Now, they certainly don't know they're not deer, so they're not supposed to be bothered by it. But they don't seem to know how the fuck to get out of it, even if there's like a huge opening. They just keep flying the wrong way because they don't know there's a huge opening right over there. They don't know shit. They're pretty dumb. Okay, magnificent flying machine. Great idea. Pretty, pretty, all that kind of crap. But don't pretend they know anything magical. They're little program bots. They're fucking robots, just like you. Butterfly consciousness and bird species consciousness are... La, 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 la. So, yes, all the birds are telepathically connected to each other. No, they're not. Speciated, but each of the individuals are individuated. They are fundamentally unique and distinct in some finite, measurable way. That's kind of fucking obvious. I mean, shit. If I shoot one bird, the other birds all don't go, ow, 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 and fall. No, the one I shot does. This is an individual bird, an individual robot. If I kick one Coke machine, it doesn't mean all the other Coke machines all of a sudden, no, I don't feel like giving Coke away anymore. I'm mad. Somebody's pissing me off. It's true with all species. The idea that the species that are on this planet are the only species that are possible is unadulterated bullshit. Well, who the fuck is arguing that when everybody knows there was a zillion more dead things, species that don't exist anymore than the ones that do exist now? So obviously everybody already knows there's lots and lots of possible ways to make a stupid bot and lots of versions of retarded bot. So what? Yeah. It's just delusional because it's not consistent with the rules. Ah, the rules. There, yeah. Fuck you, rules. There's no rules. There's just um, cause and effect. And the fact is that the first causes sort of defined all the effects. So you're fucked. It's all just because of the way the dice were rolled and it's done. That's it. The outcome will be the outcome. Uh, what will be, will be. It won't be what it won't be. That's it. Of course there are other species. There have to be. There's an infinite fractal array. 
Yeah, there's no, there's no such thing as infinite anything. It's a pile of horse shit. <laughs> That's just the way it works. Yeah, it's la 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 la, says you, without any evidence whatsoever. So you're just persuading me with your wonderful lyrical bullshit. Though the husband of this woman who's dead didn't kill her with this butcher knife that has blood all over it and his fingerprints on it and his handprint is actually on the knife and the floor. And no, 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 he didn't do it. The magical universe probabilized a fractal imitation of him. And it was the fractaloid who did it. The fractaloid on Mars. <laughs> Somebody should make that <laughs> that B movie. The fractaloids from Mars. The fractaloids. Yeah, something Alex Jones could be all heated up about. The fractaloids are coming to get us. Take away our freedom to be assholes. So, think about the implications of that. So, there's no question. There's no possible question. Okay, he's not quite as old as the other fathers, but he's an early father. I've been practicing being an old fart my whole life, and I think I've got, I've got it down pretty well. I'm like a pantomime farter, and uh, so I'll contribute some fartation here. Uh, farty, 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 fart, fart. There uh, is not some form of replication of approximation of... of each rules operate everywhere in the universe. Right? I know these rules are fractalizing, absolute fractalization. Uh, it's happening everywhere. I mean, there's not only fractaloids on Mars, but there's fractaloids in the uh, fucking Alpha Centauri. There's fractaloids, you know, fractaloiding over there, you know, pretending, you know, trying to conspire to convict you of murder and shit. You know, so you better watch out for them fractaloids. Absolute consistency. Uh, except it's not consistent with anything called evidence. Yes, it's consistent with fairy tales. Like this stuff goes over well. You know, when you're talking to the three bears and stuff like that, they get it. I mean, they get it right away. They go, oh, fractaloids. Yeah, I'm a pain in the ass fractaloids, always framing me for murder. They get it. But, you know, some of these people, I mean, you know, they're just stupid. They don't just keep saying, show me. Where's your evidence? You know, Bullshit like that. <laughs> evidence, evidence. <laughs> Can't they see the fractaloid on the wall? It's fractaloid written all over the fucking thing. Doesn't the universe just scream to you? Fractaloids are everywhere. Fuck. They're not different than Orion because it's out there. It is out there the way it is because it's the same as what is here. <laughs> <laughs> Old farts out, farting. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a real revolution. Yeah. yeah. But they own all their special conditions. They own all their special rules. We kind of uh, hit around that, with, or we did uh, the anthropic principle, for example. But, well, there are people think, and they're very smart people. I, I think it's the anthropomorphic principle, you know. Human centered universe. We're specially Weschel. We're fractaloidy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see fractaloids everywhere because we're fractaloids. So, these are actually the fractaloids. So, it should be like fractaloids from Earth threatening the rest of the universe. And that's why there are so many dissident scientists now, um, <clears throat> you know, failing out. I idiocracy. Bailing out, oh, they're bailing out is because <laughs> whatever, they can't sell any more Three Bears books. Three Bears go to, you know, Quantum, uh, Quantum of Amia. <laughs> yeah, Quantum of Amia. The Three Bears in Wonderland. Yeah, they can't sell that novel. They literally are bailing out of conventional physics and science. Oh, well, yes, they're bailing out on reason, um, any kind of respect for the truth, 
clearly bailing out on that, you know, full of conspiracy theory, loopy de doo nonsense. They're after coming to get us. They stole all of the Steinman's books and have them in a special vault, and I can't get them. And gravitating to these conversations like this. Yes, uh, fucking idiots. People have had way too much lead in their diet, and clearly they're all fucking retarded. They can't even figure out that that fucking railing on the staircase looks like a fucking accident waiting to fucking happen. And it looks like shit. <laughs> yeah. It's lousy symmetry. All over the planet, online, and groups like the National Philosophy Alliance and you know, the International Tesla Society. And there's hundreds of them out there. Yes, kooks and kooker and kookerosity and kooker mega kooka, uh, wacko smacko, jacko wacko smacko, the society for wank your brain off. And it's impossible to keep up with them because they keep popping up. Much of it comes from Australia. I mean, there's just. Yes, yeah, Australia full of fucking, you know. Uh, lead. <laughs> Lots of lead in Australia. No doubt about it. There's just a, a wonderful wellspring of this extraordinary, innovative manifestation that comes out of Australia. There's popping up everything. Uh, still... A religious colony, right, of criminals. Criminals who found Jesus. And uh, so now they're still, you know, then they found out that Oh, Jesus is retarded? Mm. Well, I can make up something else, can I? Fractaloid? Can I pray to the holy fractaloid? Yeah. No law against it in Australia. And it's impossible to keep up with it. So that's why bias. That's why bias. That's the model. And I don't expect you to remember any of that stuff, except just remember it. That it operates from the inside out, not from the outside in. Yeah, so it's exactly more the same bullshit. The magical kernel of the inside has all of the magical powers. And it doesn't have anything to do with that whole external universe thing. No, no, no. The inside of us all. The magic. The magic, magical. In the center of the center coal. Creating the fractaloid eyes. Well, I didn't talk about it because I don't want to confuse you. You don't mean anything, just to piss you out. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I talked about the math, but I didn't show you any of this. It's all kind of magical math, you know. It's like C equals phi over WY. Yeah, you know, you're not going to know what that means immediately. It means I'm talking out of my ass, but you know, you're not going to know that immediately. Well, some of you will know that immediately, but not you, <laughs> because you're fat and stupid. Oh, another English-speaking fellow, or Australian. It's probably the Australians. Maybe it's an Australian house of wonder. Look, the staircase is made out of rock down here, and it turns into wood here. What a fucking goddamn barfing nightmare. Ugh. Um, about specific. I think that like that river and ice analogy is a really good one. And you get that, you get well, that's insane. That's the edge. It's in here. Yeah. yeah. It's in there. <clears throat> and I didn't think that out. I mean, I stole it from somebody else. That's a great. That's a great yeah. metaphor. Yeah. I have no hesitation in using the best stuff I can find wherever I can find. It. So. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know what the metaphor was. He talked too gibbery, but whatever. I'm sure it's not a great metaphor. A bear pooing in the woods. That's basically, that says it all, doesn't it? On the public, yeah, <laughs> for, for sure. And we give attribution every time, so. Ownership is an illusion. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's not one of my issues. I don't own it. See, this is the product of about 25 years. Uh, I mean, again, another stupid, you know, just a cliche statement. People like, ownership is an illusion. Well, no, it isn't. You, you can practically buy something and you own it. and You can go to court and protect your ownership and, yeah, it's yours. I mean, yes, you don't get to own being alive, so you can't own stuff when you're dead. But 
clearly people have inherited an awful lot of free stuff. Of really concentrated work on my part, that I'm standing on the shoulders of at least 1,500 other people whose work I quoted and probably 15,000 other people whose work I didn't quote. Yeah. Uh, I I doubt those numbers for sure. Who could who could watch fifteen thousand individual wackos talking wackarani? I mean, I didn't invent a lot of that stuff, but we looked at it different. That's all. It would be a manifestation of the collective consciousness. Oh, the collective consciousness, magical consciousness. Yeah, collectively conscious. We're all collecting our consciousness. Yeah, collecting. Tapping into the collectiveness of our collectivosity. Yeah, I don't sense any of that. Not a single tiny shred of it. Not a, not a single little tiny bit of anything called connectedness. Ah, so we have some new commenters. Oh, fun, fun. Oh, here we go. You could just quit bringing up Alex Jones, please. Alex Jones is a raving lunatic. Yet, you're some <clears throat> beacon of truth and sensibility, question mark. No, I'm sitting here saying, what, what am I, where am I threatening anyone, okay? Where, where am I saying, go kill physics? Go, go find a physicist and kill them because they're stealing your, your freedom. I mean, fuck you. You're so delusional that you'll fall off the edge of uh, the earth. Yeah, you ought to fucking get cancer and die, fucker. Get what you deserve. Get exactly what you deserve. You lying little sack of shit. I bet you don't got shit on your channel, quantum person. Oh, I'm Mr. Quantum. Oh, yeah, nothing. Quantum Megadicica. Fuck you. Fuck you. Can't make an argument, pussy. Can't answer his question, pussy. <laughs> you know. Oh, you want to mop the floor with your rag doll hair. Right, the hair chicks love. Yeah, my my chick magnet hair is a problem for you, pussy. Inverto Pino man. Oh, pathetic. Fuck off. <clears throat> Let's see. Try it. Try it, you anonymous coward. <laughs> yeah, let's see him try to do anything. Fucking idiots. If only your father got to see you now. Uh, that would have convinced him of <clears throat> antinatalism in one swoop. He was already convinced, so uh, he already admitted he had kids for absolutely no good reason. And he wishes, uh, in theory, that if he could relive his life, he could have taken all the money he wasted on kids and he could have traveled the world, something he wanted to do. The fact that he's so deluded to think he's <clears throat> redeemed himself with this theory is genuinely painful. Well, I, it doesn't, it's not a counter argument again. You lose some more. You can't answer the simple questions on the videos. You can't make a comment relevant to the fact that your push theory is idiotic, that your fucking two conflicting theories is an idiotic premise for physics. They have two completely different mechanisms that are both don't account for the energy. Right? Virtual photons. The magnets create virtual photons. Okay, yes, that sounds like an energetic thing, but it's not real energy. A virtual photon doesn't have any real energy. <laughs> so it's a, yes, it's a magical force that doesn't require any energy. You don't have a counter argument for that simple argument. All you got is raggy shit comments to make. You fucking loser. You fucking lose. You got nothing. All you have is ad hominem, useless tripe. You got no counter argument. You fail. You got no dick. <clears throat> All right. So that's it. Good. <clears throat> that was fun. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to interact with humans. Useless pieces of fucking turd. Liars. Just disgusting, lying pieces of shit. Well, in, in a way, it certainly is. In a way, it certainly is. See, the, the proof of that is that we now have independent validation of the fundamental presets coming out of places like the United States Patent Office <laughs> and reformulation of the general rules of, of the theory of relativity. 
So the patent office is where you go to find what experiments have actually been done, huh? The proven theories of physics, the patent office has all of those. And we know the patent office has 9 million to 1 ratio between patents that are actually rational and patents that are irrational. <laughs> yeah. All right. 9 million to 1 is probably an exaggeration. But the number of patents that never convert into anything called a useful device is huge. Huge. Those formulas now appear wide lines, and angularity shows up in them, and they don't understand why. It's very interesting. Yes. Where's your evidence of this? They don't understand your angularity missing concept. Where is your evidence of that? Oh, that's right. That won't be provided. There's no evidence of anything will be provided. So, there you have it. Took longer than 20 minutes, but I wanted to make Thank sure you understand it. Yes. Ah, yeah, it's brilliant. Thank you, Lord Fractal. <laughs> you know, Fractalime. He's the, uh, what would it, what's the good word for that? Uh, the poo fractal, or, you know, I'm thinking of a poo ba. Fractal ba. <laughs> yeah. The grand fractal ba. Oh, that was magical. So magical. Magical, magical, magical. I just feel so magical now. Full of the magical fractal magic. Yeah. Pathetic planet. Pathetic. <sighs> now, oh, Tyler Johnson. Now, it's got a chick in it, but it's not going to really have a chick in it, so I won't bother. All right. So. I think I've accomplished my task here, more than accomplished it. But anyway, so the subject is, um, though if you watch this last hour and a half, that was useless really in a lot of ways. Well, it wasn't useless as I pointed out some physical truths. But anyway, um, you know, the real purpose of this video will be to collect information on Lesage gravity. That is experimental evidence, simulations, stuff that um, isn't just somebody saying something but something that is actually a, uh, an enhanced um, yeah, simulation or something, something more um, interactive, something more, um, something to make it real, the principle, to understand the reality of what pressure does in a system, pressure that can't travel crooked lines what straight line pressure does in a system. So anybody can find any references that demonstrate the power of straight line force um, through Google, whatever. Like I said, I'll, I'll pay you 10 bucks for a link that's good, a good link. And uh, I'll pay you a minimum of $30 if you can actually make a simulation uh, under the rules I stated earlier in the video. Um, and I will attempt to solicit donations for you, for your efforts, and such. But, yeah, there needs to be more. People need to see it so they can see how simple it is, how simple it is. All you need to do is make a bunch of energetic particles. Just create heat. Just create an energetic system. And any two things that are different than those bits, bigger, will move towards each other just like gravity. And if people could see that, then maybe they'd realize how that makes so much more sense than saying space is bent. How it explains it so much better to just create a push force instead of having this idiotic notion of a, something pulling from the inside. Pushing from the outside is just so much simpler. It's so much it's, it, it passes Occam's razor by a mile, okay? I mean, it's got like a 98, and all the other stuff has like a 32. And it's just a huge difference in terms of the simplicity of it as an explanation for everything that moves in this universe. All right. So I'll give you one more minute to see if anybody has anything reasonable to say. But there's just not enough reasonable people. It's sad truth.
I guess I could do comments. Yeah, I didn't do that. I might as well wipe them and I'm out. They weren't very good, actually. It's kind of discouraging. But it's always discouraging. It's, it's the way it works. Uh, let's see. Well, it really wasn't that bad, actually. It was just this one was a little disappointing. So this is the Michael Falwell guy. So he, he sort of, well, anyway, hi, Gary. Hope you are well. Well, you know, you can hope. Uh, talking of knots, check out this bold claim. So it's just some kind of crap about laser beams getting tangled and it's just nonsense and you know i don't i don't really want to again it's not my job to debunk um bizarrely strange experiments that can be dissected five million different ways about what's actually happening so i'm not going to really bother but uh, yeah there's no laser knots um finally figured out the link thing by the way my videos aren't all that strange they are my children, and all the credit for filming and making goes to my partner in crime. Yes, and you are a criminal, in my opinion. I mean, you know, having kids under the best of circumstances is retarded, and clearly your circumstances aren't the best. And so, I, you know, they all look okay now, but I mean, just saying, it's just such a messy thing to be doing, having kids uh, insanely uh, in exact science. And, you know, nobody's qualified to take on the responsibility in my opinion so it all looks like drunk fucking to me you know like drunk driving you know yeah you people can come up with excuses but it's just drunk fucking you, you have no business making babies uh very dangerous uh so serious mind stimulating i missed a lot of your vids due to being busy uh time to get caught up well i you know i appreciate your existence uh even though it's just periodic uh so this one i don't know what this means bb must really be threatened i don't know who bb is so wallace thornhill like the video on wallace thornhill i don't know why bb would be a reference uh like the eu is faulty science based on jesus i don't know that doesn't really make any much sense i'm just gonna no offense but i'm gonna delete it because i don't know what the fuck you're talking about and that would be it. So, yeah, comments weren't very, didn't do much for me. <laughs> didn't give me any kind of warm feeling or anything. All right. So, uh, nobody else commenting. So, I guess it's time to go. So, I'll go. Because it's time to go. Well, there were some little bits of humor in this anyway. So, I think I made some pretty good mocking little jokes. Some of it's not so bad. No, it's not all a huge waste of fucking time. But yes, unfortunately, I want these rooms to be more than this. I want to be able to interact with real people who are willing to uh, uh, willing to say their vile crap right to my face so I can say to them, well, what have you done on this planet? What's, what's your contribution? What are you passionate about, fuckhead? You know, and how exactly have I violated some rule? I, I have honestly stepped into the universe and you know gained some experience in life i honestly think the theory of relativity was just made up and it sort of fit and that was good enough everybody said okay it sort of fits that's good enough because they didn't have any other explanation because 300 years ago they pissed on the right answer they literally just pissed on it it was the right answer and they pissed on it and then once they've pissed on it, they don't want to say, oh, that book might have been good. But yeah, it's got our piss all over it. So they were afraid to pick it back up because I'd piss all over it. But it was actually the right answer. So, and the fact that you don't know that, you're bad. Not my bad. That's your bad. And I'm quite certain. I mean, it's an honest statement. statement. Swear on my... The welfare of my parents' souls. I know that's a silly thing, but I don't, what else I got? The welfare of my sisters, whatever. I swear <laughs> everything I'm saying about what I'm observing is the truth. I'm not just making shit up. I really think this is the true history, that this is what really happened, that you've all been duped by preposterously silly story bent space it's silly 
time dimensions. It's silly. Wavicle particle thingies. It's silly. And you fell for it. I believe that's your bad. Not my bad. Okay. So, generally speaking, fuck you. Asshole. Little dupit. <laughs> you little dupit. 